I, I think it's awesome uh, seeing all the Oklahomies that you've got to talk to right. since the last time we, Wait, we, we got to talk with you. Are you recording right now? Is this part of the podcast? Yeah, it'll be used. Okay, I was going to say, let's not... If you haven't started recording yet, I was like, let's let's hold some. No, no, up. yeah, no, I'm yeah, sorry, this is recording. We just haven't started the full episode yet. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, but but yeah, we'll talk about all the Oklahoma homies. Um, like that that whole scene is just popping so hard. Like, uh, it's it's great to see. Um, that looks like you've been doing some cool stuff too. I saw you. You just had a little fest, right? Yeah, I had the the five year fest. Uh, so that's the the first of hopefully many. Um, probably do try and do another one next year, but in the in the Twin Cities instead. Very cool. cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, I I know I know we have a lot of catching up to do and a lot of things we want to talk about. So, uh, as I normally say, do you guys have a, a unopened beverage that you'd like to participate in the opening crack with? I know how this one uh, works. I have a <laughs> beverage. But I've you know, brought, it works. Uh-oh. We brought a giant <laughs> box of biscuits. Ready? We're going to cook one every 10 minutes. Eat biscuits. Is <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm down for it. Oh, wait. What's in here? Uh, not. Oh. <laughs> wait, so there's really no biscuits? No biscuits. Uh, I didn't realize until now how heavy that thing was. Okay. <laughs> he thought there were actually biscuits. I was fired up for some biscuits. Dude, part of me was kind of like, that's going to be like a cool new like gimmick or record that someone's going to try and do in one of these episodes. Just like every 10 minutes, just warm up a Jimmy Dean breakfast sandwich. Get 15 of them. <laughs> <laughs> 15 in one sit. Let's go. So, um, all right. So you know how it goes. I'll do the little countdown. Bring you, uh, we'll crack these and I'll bring the three of you in. All right. In three, two, one. Welcome to the Beers of Bands podcast with your host, Michael Torres. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Beers of Bands. Uh, this week, I got some homies back on the podcast. I'm sitting down with Lip Wizard. How you guys doing? What's going on? Great to be back, baby. Awesome, yeah. Dude, I- I'm-, I'm happy to have you guys back. Uh, you know, it's. I think you guys were on, I think that episode came out, like, what, June ish of last year um if i remember correctly you know we talked about your your that record vile which if anyone's uh listening please go check out vile and everything else that these guys have out in their discography um and also if you haven't listened to limp wizard and you want to know some more backstory like formation and all that stuff we did that already so those questions are going to be on this one go back listen to listen to that part (laughs) one um and check that out um you know uh a lot's lots happened since then sorry what Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm interrupting. I was saying that was a really fun pod too, dude. That that was that was great. Uh, I gotta say, there's some probably some of the crazier stories that have that you'll hear on the on the show are in that episode. Um, if anyone checked out the the like clip show that I did at the end of 2023, you know I had to include a couple of those stories, um, yeah. just because they're just fucking wild and the the shenanigans you guys get into is just amazing. Um, but you know, a a lot's happened since then. We're, we're a year and some change after that, that initial time recording, um, you know, Vile had been out, has now been out for a year and six months. Um, which is, does does it feel crazy to think that it's been out that long already? Oh, for sure. I think so. Uh, just especially coming off of like, you know, that was right after the pandemic. So that was like when we got started again. And so it's like, even that like thinking like oh man it's been a, a long a long time now i don't know yeah, yeah sure to me the song's still even older than that because yeah like jeff's like we were writing them in 2020 so right it, uh, time doesn't stop <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you guys don't either uh you have a new ep that is out that we'll talk about here in a second but i in my typical fashion i was so excited to start talking with you guys that i completely forgot to do the main thing as i normally do like i said this is the wizards from uh, Oklahoma City, you guys are like an emo, uh, pop punk, a little hardcore now, um, off this new EP. Um, can you kind of go around and say who you are and what you do in Limp Wizards? Yeah, I'm uh, Frankie, I play guitar. I'm Jeff, I play guitar as well. I'm Taylor, I sing and play bass. 
Uh, and, Rainy, oh, Rainy's our drummer. Didn't he have a picture? No. He had a quote. He had a quote. Rainy, I'd be here. For the but, second time in a row, uh, the drummer's not here, but she's still good. <laughs> he said um, he would like you to know. <laughs> well, we need to preface this with something that's real small. I'll re read the quote, Frank, and I'll kind of explain. Rainy would like you to know that um, <laughs> he played his first show ever with us. And it's kind of crazy that he's now, or he played his first show with another band with us. And it's crazy that he's now in like playing band. drums with us now. So, yeah. yeah. Rainy has joined the band. Uh, so, but he was working, unfortunately, so he couldn't be here. But he's here in spirit. Yeah. Shit. Heart failure, diabetes. Diabetes. Type, type 1 diabetes, baby. Hold on, let me silence that. I'm sorry. But no, yeah, he, uh, he was a homie that we, we've we known for a long time, played in a bunch of other bands uh, from way back in the day and just kept in touch with, and now he's drumming for us. That's, that's always fun to see, uh, kind of like, that just shows like how good of a community that you guys have in Oklahoma City, where or like Oklahoma in general, where you guys still keep in touch with each other and like you're like people are willing to kind of come in and join projects that are already existing oh, yeah. and like because it's it's daunting joining something that like you're you haven't been a part of and you like that's been existing for you know five plus years to go into that and have to like hope you fit in like the new kid at school like that's always fucking terrifying well that and those first practices you know we had a show coming up and it's just like hey uh we're throwing you right in the deep end. We need like <laughs> we gotta we gotta get a like set going. Ten of them, ten of them. And then week, like man. the whole first practice, he uh, like I think he knew we had shows coming up. But at the end of practice, one of us was like, "Yeah, so we have that show in two weeks." And he was like, "Wait, what?" And we were like, "No, yeah, we're playing in two weeks." And he's like, "Oh fuck, I thought it was like two months." And we we're like, "No." <laughs> and but he he stepped up and and did it, did great, and he's been a great fit. So yeah, it's been good. It's been good. Uh, well, like I normally say for the members that can't be here, this is where we pour one out in their honor. By pour one out, oh. I just mean we have a drink for them. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, obviously you've had a, a new member change uh, since the last time we talked. Um, as far as I know, it's the same person because I didn't see them on the last episode either. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it's... It's been cool to see everything that's going on. I know you guys have uh, kind of hit the road a, a couple times. I think one time for sure with the, with the homie. Um, uh, I'm gonna S, blank on. S Reedy. Yes, on, with with, with S Reedy. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it's we were kind of talking about it before we fully started too. Like this Oklahoma scene and like everyone that I've kind of interacted with. I feel like since the last time I was talking with you guys, um, has been pretty oh, pretty great dude, just to see like. It's everything. crazy. It's crazy how many. Yeah, how many people we've seen have talked with you? It's like mm -hmm. the list goes on and on and on. We, we think that's awesome. You know, it's like every so often, it's like, oh gosh, you know, so and so's on the pod. We need to check that. Yeah, it's like that lieutenant. We got the Tulsa homies up there. Let's go. Uh, I just got to bump in and say something off topic. We're talking about Sean Reedy and like everyone being in different bands and stuff. I see your shirt says TV Cop, and yep. this is like a weird uh, factoid that I don't even know. If, I'm sure you guys might remember this. You might not. Me and Sean were going to make a band called DIY Cop, and it was going to be stylized like that. One word, TV Cop, but DIY Cop. And uh, the only song we wrote ended up turning into a Limp Wizard song, Plastic Moan, which he ended oh, up shit. singing on. So I don't know. You guys were just talking about the scene and different bands and interacting, and I saw your shirt, and I was like, it's really serendipitous and weird, you know? Yeah. Like a full circle awesome. moment. Right. But uh, the band never happened, so it didn't matter. <laughs> well, at least at least the the song still made the the light of day because that song rips too. Yeah, yeah. Sean Sean ghost wrote your ghost writes a bunch of stuff at this point. Like he's like an unofficial like he'll be at my house or Frankie's house and we'll just be playing guitar, or he'll be playing guitar and I'll start singing something, and then he'll be like, "Well, I rap. I'm not going to use this. Like you guys can develop it, you can have it if you want." And uh, or like he'll go to the studio and like lay harmonies with me. So he's really like a fifth member that just doesn't perform with us at this point, you know. Dude, hell yeah. He, he, he was so modest on, on that episode you did with him. He was so modest. He was like, I don't really get into crazy, anything crazy, but uh, dude, I, I don't know. I feel like that dude's got a di a, just a different schedule. I'll see him skateboarding at like four in the morning, like every morning, just like. <laughs> 
putting in work, man. I can't do that. Right. Um, but yeah, like there, there's, there's been a lot of homies that I've seen kind of, it's, it's, it's fun finding like those pockets in America. It almost feels like, like I've, I've hit like the, the Wisconsin pocket of bands that happened through there. Um, you know, I hit that pocket in like Michigan, uh, cause Michigan's also popping off and now I've like kind of invaded like this, this pocket of Oklahoma bands and, uh, yeah. you know, just every band that I like get a chance to talk to like they all fucking rip and like they're all like even you guys like everyone is just so nice and kind like i oklahoma is one of those spots i think i talked about it on on one episode uh briefly but it's like a spot that you never think is going to be like this like cool like pocket of music and it's just it's so great that it's like all getting out there and everyone can find it and experience it i don't think before streaming that it was like this as much though like mm. even 10 years ago, streaming was a thing, but it wasn't just the social media and the internet wasn't what it is now. And it's right. just like 10 years ago, like we wouldn't, I don't know. Like well, to, being in Oklahoma city, I feel like uh, Dallas gets a little more attention than we do. Um, and I've heard that like Tulsa is a little more uh, uh, of, of a better destination because it's, you know, closer to some different places. So I feel like Oklahoma city would get skipped quite often. Uh, I'm happy that it's not not quite as as bad as it used to be as far as that goes. Right. Uh, but uh, hold on, I had a thought and I lost it, but that's okay. We 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 move on. Uh, one other cool thing before we get into this EP that I want to mention for everyone that has been tuning into episodes, and you always see this like little uh, plushie over my. Uh, uh- Oh, oh yeah, um, I just see it. You know, it is it is from these fine gentlemen. Uh, it is the the mascot Ooh. off of their their album Vile. Um, and what you know when. Oh, I said salute. Sorry, no, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I thought you gave him a name or something. I was like, what? Uh, but you know, like this thing is uh is, is really cool. And I remember when I opened that package, I was not expecting uh that to be in there, and it was re- it was a nice, cool surprise. So like, I make sure that dude's in in every episode. Awesome. I got to show you something. It's nothing big, but uh, I work in construction. I'm an electrician and like lunchbox stickers are a big thing, mm-hmm. you know, and everyone has different kinds. Like some people have really political ones. Some people have hiking ones and mine doesn't have too many, but I, I don't know if you can see it, but I got beers with fans right there. Oh, and on the back. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, we got, we got the 40 on there. Oh, yeah. We got yeah. The, other, the other sticker too. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, f- fuck yeah. I didn't bring the beer represent baby. Oh yeah, yeah the beer koozies. The beer koozies are at my house. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> hey, but but we got the merch. We got that beers with bands merch. We got hooked up yeah. for sure, man. That was awesome. Uh, you know, yeah, it was it was great getting that in the mail. I'm happy that uh, those koozies are treating you guys well, and uh, I appreciate. Uh, I'm happy to make the lunchbox. Hell yes. Yeah. <laughs> now that said, like I said, it's construction. Like. Let's say I'm there with like 20 other dudes. There might be one that has any idea what a podcast even is. Like I feel like <laughs> around a lot of boomers, you're like, people just talk and it's like the radio. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a podcast. And so, but it's it's there, and if anyone asks, I'd be happy to tell them. Um, yeah, dude, that makes me happy. Uh, someone the other day like sent me like a a picture of a one of my stickers in like a bathroom in a at a, a venue I think in Philly. And I was just like, it's just cool to see, like, it get posted anywhere and, like, be out in the wild. So it's it's crazy to me. Uh, and I love it. Increase the footprint, baby. <laughs> right. Um, but now I want to jump into uh, the new EP. You know, it's been out for, oh, shit, I, I forgot to add it to my list. How long has it been out? Uh, I'm blanking on it. Two months. Yeah, going on two months. Going on What's two it, months at the time. 10? We yeah, were yeah. two months yesterday. We were going to release okay. it May 4th, but. Uh, oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Kendrick Lamar emailed us and was like, I'm trying to drop Not Like Us that day. So we moved it and we changed we're it. We're not going up against that. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, we, no, that's yeah. respectful. Respectful. We like Kendrick. We just appreciate he let us get the heads up because it was. Yeah, that, that, yeah. That was nice of him to at least let you guys know. That way it wasn't like, you know, any bad beef or anything like that. We didn't want to make him look bad. I mean, I think, you know, it could have taken over that song and, you know, we would have been the big story of the day. We oh, weren't trying to interject. True. We're no Rick Ross, that's for sure. We just, we walked from the sidelines. 
Yeah, so the 10th has been two months. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, this, uh, I, 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 like, I know I said it before we started, and you guys know I'm going to say it a fuck ton, but, like, your new EP, Prudence, is fucking phenomenal. Um, you know, it, it comes in just barely 11 minutes, and I yeah. want so much more. Like, I've, I've loved this new sound that you guys did for this EP um, so much. Uh, yeah. Like, for people that had listened to Vile and going into this, like, you notice, like, a slight change, more, a little bit more emo, a little bit heavier, uh, almost like a, kind of like a, a post-hardcore nest, like, but I feel like that's kind of, like, a, a lot of stuff that's kind of going around, like, people are getting, hitting that wave, um, yeah. but it's nice to see your guys' take on kind of, like, that, that sound. Um, is there, what, what kind of sparked that change from Vile sound to Prudence? That's a great take and question because uh, it definitely does have a different tone to it. I think uh, I remember like uh, what was the first single drowned out. <clears throat> I remember me and Frankie had done a uh, yeah, like a, a local music scene game show and it, it, it was a good was time. And, that uh, probably sounds fucking crazy, but I saw pictures of it. And it's it's in this dude's garage, and he like had a pool. And we played Jeopardy with, and like all the topics were other local bands and like stuff like that relating to the Oklahoma music scene. And he would like film it and shit, guess the song. Hell yeah, it, it was pretty cool. It but while, while we were there, I I had this riff in mind, and uh, me and Frankie did it, and so I was like, "Yo, come after this, and like let me let me uh, show you this riff because it was I I I kind of take it as like it was kind of more in the style of stuff that he would normally play. And uh, I just liked it and I didn't know where to take it. So we kind of linked up and wrote the beginnings of that song. And then I think control of the lead or uh, yeah, control of the lead. That was another one of Frankie's lit uh, riffs. Almost called it Lava Man. I, yeah. The original name, Lava Man. <laughs> but uh, it just, I don't know. It's taken a different style for sure. A uh, long winded way to get to that answer. But uh, yeah, I think that, um, you know, it's, it's interesting you say that because actually two of those songs on Prudence were actually uh, recorded originally with Vile. We felt they maybe didn't fit. Um, okay. so that, that was uh, Can't Talk to Steve and uh, Bulldozer City. And that's even interesting uh, as well because Taylor and I, uh, along with Sean uh, S. Reedy, we wrote those two songs just randomly like 2018. Um, so they got recorded with Vile. We didn't want to release them with Vile, and we thought that they maybe fit a little bit, a little bit better with these and two songs. Bulldozer originally was written uh, written about Paul George. It was it. I thought it was addicted to weed. I don't know. It was like a, it was like a sarcastic straight edge song called "Addicted to Weed," and Sean wrote the lyrics, and it was like a uh, it was like a straight edge song like about not doing drugs and shit. It was hyper focused just on weed, not hard <laughs> drugs, not alcohol, but just like how bad weed is. Taking shots at me. Uh, and Frankie wrote the riff for that and everything. It was just like a joke song. We never did anything. And then I think he just played it at practice. And like, we should actually turn that into a real song. And of course, now the song's not about that. But uh, yeah. So once again, Sean indirectly interwove himself into our process. <laughs> Even like six years before this song saw the light of day, you know. So well, and I think with uh, control of the lead and uh, drowned out, you know, I think we all we all like drug church a lot. Uh, we all like grunge, Nirvana. So I think there's, you know, maybe maybe getting that element out a little bit more uh, for maybe those two songs. Uh, at least that's kind of the stuff I went on a little for bit. Sure. Later, so, but <clears throat> I don't think it even like started off as like doing something different, but it came out that way, and then like just having the conversation i totally forgot two of those were for vile and it's funny hearing you say it like yeah the, the sounds are different and it's like we picked up on it it's cool that maybe some other people yeah, did too you know so it's like all right so maybe we did the right choice yeah, boys why okay not, why not why not uh release one of those on vile yeah, yeah very cool. been a good, good decision yeah no i i think i think bringing them into this ep and releasing it as like this this collection of four uh was a smart move um you know yeah. when when i turned this on to as i was you know getting into the mindset to like do this episode and like i i turned on that ep and i was i was pleasantly surprised i mean even even like the the album artwork yeah. if you 
if people remember like the vile album artwork, it, it's like this this colorful, um, you know, it's got like the the letters all in pink and stuff, and like you know, yeah, you, you see your little dude, um, more animated in it ish uh but then you get to like the prudence cover art and like you can tell like okay this is like a different facet of these dudes just even from like the cover art because it it just like sets the tone for like this like like you said kind of like drug church kind of grunginess that you're going to get into um and and it works like you guys kill it it works so well yeah i think with with the vile album art you know um i think it's 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 cool for me that we have the the vile guy like i love that mm-hmm. little guy but i do think that um it may be set expectations a little bit differently for like first time listeners uh, you know i got a lot of people that thought that it was going to be more like uh like poppy or like oh, yeah. uh, like like almost synthy or more like iconic hyper pop hyper pop or, like or something like that you know um so uh you know i think maybe there was a little bit more of a more of an effort yeah to, to uh, be maybe a little bit more consistent with the look and the feel of everything, but that picture, uh, the the art was actually a picture that Jeff took or my girlfriend took. I, but it's it's my neighbor's back neighbor's backyard. Yes, right <laughs> uh, she's a sweet lady, but yeah, no, I, I I was walking by and I saw it. And I said, "Man, wow, that's a great picture." And then I sent it to everyone, and we're like, "Hang on, we well, might be onto something." You sent us the same picture about thirteen <laughs> yeah. times. Said, God, we need to check this out. This picture, look at it, look <laughs> at it. <laughs> tell them, tell them about the story behind the name, though. Oh yeah, and then the name Prudence. Uh, it is an homage to my uh, uh, R.I.P. My my former duck. I had a pet duck but, uh, named Prudence. She was sweet, and she was. Uh, eight my girlfriend's telling me she was eight yeah. years old and uh yeah she got taken out by a damn uh, uh a kite hawk but she lived eight good long years and she ran our backyard for a long time and so just an homage for her oh look at that auto zoom too yeah this I'm zoom is it. crazy i'm like why is it coming? Don't, don't zoom on me come on get back to this. <laughs> yeah, there we go all right there yeah go. so yeah for, so it was a special thing that and i kind of thought like with like just like a picture or two like the kind of that the file was like a big production in the sense that like how long we worked on it, the the money, the time and all the effort we spent into it, you know, so it was like wanted to have a really clean kind of polished maybe uh, look and feel with the release. And then opposed to this one, it's like it was more just of a like raw, gritty, gritty like and raw, gritty. after putting out like that 13 song uh, uh, like actual record or whatever it was like all right get back to the roots a little bit in the sense of like let's just pump out some music stuff that we like and some stuff we've been working on and like let's get music out there so we can kind of go to the next thing and and it felt just like a a good like uh you know release that that the vital record and then it's like all right what's next and it it was good to just get something out get something out and be like all right we can breathe take a breath and let's get some shows we got some music and now with uh, a new drummer it's like catch him up on some songs then hopefully be back uh, in the process of uh, writing some new right, tunes recorded, before yeah. too long <laughs> yeah. rinse, rinse and repeat right we love to fucking write music so that's good in the sense that uh there's never not something to do <laughs> right now with these four songs you know like i, I know the last time we talked bio is basically almost three to four years like in the making from like when it really kind of got flushed out to, to release two of these songs are from you know the vile time even a little bit before but like for the other two songs for the first two for drowned out and like control of delete um when did those come into play like did you guys did it like those sparks for those ones kind of come towards the end of like the the vile timeline or was it like kind of right afterwards where it was kind of like okay that's finally done we can think about new things and then like it just kind of came to you then i feel like um i feel like i had the riff for control of the lead sort of at the, the the back end of the file uh writing and recording process i think i have a video on my phone of me trying to work through that like the chorus on control of the lead from like 20 2020 or 2021 even so i, I almost even kind of group that all together with with the vile songs almost as like the the it was like the next thing um and i feel like yeah drowned out was it was it was towards the end of 
Drowned out was, was it was pretty quick. Drowned out was a pretty quick turnaround. I felt like we we pretty much wrote that and we got in the studio like a, a week or two after we had it kind of like tightened up and ready to go for that one. So well, I feel like in between there too, there were some ideas and thoughts that were maybe turning into some stuff that we also just kind of shelved or hmm. just kind of put away in general, you know. So like those are the ones that like felt polished enough to where you'd want to release them there's some other stuff it wasn't just those but those are kind of the ones that made it in a sense i don't know like uh i'm sure we've said it a couple times between the last podcast and this one like with the vile stuff being written like in advance because of all the pandemic stuff drowned out stuff and law of the main control of the week it was during vile but it wasn't because it was after all that stuff had been written it seemed like almost so I don't know. That's a weird way of saying nothing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I, I get what you're saying, where it was kind of like, after the, the main, like, main feelings jump. that you had to do for, for bio, to the point where it's kind of like, once you get to that tail end, where you're kind of just like on autopilot, just like, okay, we just yes. have to do these songs, get it out. But you're on autopilot for bio, but at the same time, you're like, okay, my mind can focus on everything else In, now. Drowned Out was so quick that uh, the night before we were supposed to record it, I, I was like in my living room, like freaking the fuck out. Cause I only had like probably 70% of the lyrics. And you know, when you're writing lyrics, like, I don't know. I know some people, uh, at, like drug church. I, I read somewhere, I think on Reddit that that dude, uh, he, he just writes in the studio, like when he's recording, just like freestyles it basically. I don't know if that's true. Um, Weezy baby. Yeah. But other people will, uh, you know, right in advance, and I'm kind of like a mixed bag there, so I was kind of freaking out, so I was like, I guess I gotta kind of freestyle some of this, but I had like half of it written. I don't know, that was different for me, just being like, all right, we're going to the studio tomorrow, we gotta figure something out. Yeah, I, I, I put forth the challenge, I think, like, specifically for us to, like, I was like, let's write a song, and, like, get recorded and put it out, like, pretty quickly, and, and that was, you know, again, how Drowned Out was, like Taylor was saying, it was like, we were we were going so fast with that one, and I could tell he was he was uncomfortable with it. But you know, it turned out uh, it turned out really well. I feel like so. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's that's like a great song to start this EP, and like, dude, Taylor, like your your lyrics on it, like they're they're fucking great. Um, Thank like, you. You know you know how it takes like a little bit to like fully listen to the lyrics and like get it and like be able to sing along, but like they're good. The hooks are there, like it's catchy. Um, like the lyrics throughout this whole EP are are, are solid. Um, like I, I did want to point out too in in uh, Control Delete, just the just the way you start off that song starts off with "Can someone shoot this elephant in the room?" and like how that whole conversation starts out. I was like, "Oh, that's kind of funny," and then I was like, "Wait, why is there an elephant in the room?" And then like it took me another second to be like, "Oh, duh!" When there's like an awkward situation, people are like, "There's an ele- like the elephant in the room." Yeah. And like it all, when it all clicked, I was like, "That's fucking clever as shit." <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that one I think has the most heart behind it. Uh, not that the other ones don't, but like you know how that is. Like sometimes something you just it, when you write it, it hits you more when you're writing it. And then that one's about hypochondria, which like I'm really bad about. Uh, I constantly just think, "Oh, my stomach hurts. I have cancer or whatever," you know. And yeah. so, well, that's my elephant in the room, so to say. It sucks, but yeah. even to the sense of that first version we went through and re-recorded every song after he initially recorded that one just because it didn't come across quite oh, right yeah you remember what I'm talking yeah about? just on control of the lead yeah but no, we, were, we no. did everything yeah because like, yeah, our engineer got a new preamp or something and he wanted me to re-record the vocals yeah and, and it was it was really awesome uh i i realized we didn't shout trace out but trace brown trace um, baby. we worked we worked on prudence with him uh and uh, Fame so, basis from Red Sun. Yeah, Red yeah. Sun. But we worked on uh, Vile and Prudence with him. He was amazing to work with, uh, as as always. So, shout out Trace. Love you, Trace. Love you, Trace. Trace. Anyway, but um, uh, but yeah, that song in itself, like uh, even recording it, 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 I can't remember if it something was weird about the vocals at first. Yeah, Trace made me retake them, and they turned out better. We'll just leave it at that. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad, glad it came did. across. Yeah. Because it, I think at one point you were even thinking about changing some vocals or the some lyrics on it. And I was like, man, I really like what you're saying. It's yeah. just we got to find a way to uh, uh, compose it or whatever. It's not mm-hmm. what you're saying, it's how you're saying that. 
Yeah. yeah, hopefully get get that one uh, actually in the set list real soon too. Get work back up again. Yeah, <laughs> new drummer's been uh, it's been fun, but it's been I realized we have a lot of bias with our own songs. Like there's a lot of songs that we just don't play for whatever reason, or or there are songs that like we have to play or we feel like we have to play. So it's been nice to have like a uh, fresh year, a, a fresh year to, to make suggestions. And, and yeah. we'll be like, we don't play that. He goes, well, that song fucking yeah. rips. Yeah, that song cool. should play that one. <laughs> hey, I guess, I guess maybe. We or vice versa. It. Some songs he's like, this song fucking sucks. We should never play this. <laughs> 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 you guys should be embarrassed for this one. No, I'm um, uh, One song that I'm, I'm interested to see how it goes in a set list for you guys, especially like, because, you know, we talked about this kind of new sound with this EP. Uh, for people that hopefully have listened to this already, if you haven't yet, please go do so. But you get to Bulldozer, and you took, you take what I thought was just going to be like this emo out, like EP, and then you kind of just 180 it real quick for, for the, this off. song. And like, fucking, I was ready to like two-step at work today. So <laughs> I was going to fucking fling Gary across the room. Um, oh, yeah. But like you guys, you guys pull that out of the back pocket, and it's it's so fucking cool too to like when when bands kind of do that and like mix it up because like everyone's seen like heard like when Origami Angel does it, and you know it fucking is cool as shit when a band you don't expect fucking drops like a a nice little like minute thirty like fucking riffy hardcoreness like that was fucking sick. We we've always been. For like the last two years, we've been talking about doing like Need a punk album. just a half hour fucking slam. Uh, what we we have a name for it? Even there's, yeah. there's no nicotine in hell. That's what we want to call it. <laughs> Make an EP or like like he said, like twenty or thirty minutes, like ten songs, just, just punishing, fucking punishing. <laughs> yeah, we, we want to do it, but it just hasn't happened yet. But, but I, I think a lot of that goes back to just like when we were first starting off as you know like trying to figure out how to be a band you know we just write quick minute and a half punk songs or what's the heaviest riff you can play after the listening to system of a down all the night dude. Yeah, and, and, and we, we came up playing around hardcore bands yeah. you know like it was always weird because we there used to be the skate park we'd play at and it was like it just like i said it'd just be hardcore bands and then we'd be playing pop punk and like everyone would go from two-stepping and like uh hardcore dancing and shit and then we'd play and it's like we're kind of <laughs> At the time, we would play too fast and kind of too hard to play like a pop punk bill, but we definitely were not hardcore enough to be like having people two step for <laughs> you know. So was, we we kind of wrote wrote some stuff to try to fit in a little bit more. Um, you know, we have a an album that's going to turn ten this year. It's called Sixteen Oh Three. It's not on Spotify, but it's a little bit heavier. Uh, it's got a heavier part in the album for sure. So. Yeah, it's nice. To, it is nice to kind of go back to that uh, earlier kind of uh, mindset and, and, and write some of those songs like that when we can. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm a hardcore uh, kid at heart. I got a minor threat tattoo, so <laughs> it, uh, it's always there. I got the black sheep on my arm. Uh, Dude, hell yeah. But I'm almost thirty, and I get to a point where it's like <laughs> playing that fast for a whole set. I'm like, fuck, I can barely keep up. <laughs> Get so fucking winded the entire time just like <gasps> when you're singing dude yeah i look at videos from when i was like 19 and i could just like just go and go and go and now i'm like fuck guys like so we're slowing for a second you know <laughs> somebody else like, get on that i can talk <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> start going over to people just cutting their strings that way they have to like try and retune the string <laughs> I, I, I need a breather uh no but it's cool to see i, I really hope that uh you know, we get to see that that hardcore album uh, from Lip Wizards in the future. Like that's the other cool thing, and I I probably talked about it on the last episode too. But like, since you guys have been doing this so long, I obviously have you know an album that's about to turn ten, which is fucking crazy. Uh, that like it's it's a it's crazy and amazing that you know you guys have still stayed this strong for ten fucking years. And you know, like I think the, on the last episode we talked about everything you guys have out because there's like a whole list. But it's cool that like you guys have never pocketed yourselves of like we're just gonna stay like this pop hug sound or like this sound this entire time it's like you guys are playing what you guys are feeling in the moment and it shows and it works out so well oh yeah 
Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Another thing I'm proud of is we've never, it's not a bad thing, you know, but like rebranding is not a bad thing, but also I take pride in the fact that like our Instagram, you can go back to like 2014. We've never just wiped social media (laughs) and become like a new band. Like, I don't know. Sometimes bands do that. And I'm like, why'd you guys do that? Like you guys had a bunch of cool shit and you can change your sound. That doesn't mean you got to like delete everything you did and just rebrand just to do it, you know? Right. Yeah. But then again, it's like, I was gonna say, if you're trying to make a bunch of money, like, you know, it is a business, and maybe that plays into it some. But with me, I just like to play music, so I'm I, I I'm not gonna just go delete everything I've done just because, you know. Well, that's a, a a great compliment too about never like trying to box in on any. You know, it's like part of the reason I think we've been able to stick around and do what we've done for as long as we have is just because everyone's open to just like it's fun to play music. And it's fun to be in a band with these guys. So it's like, whatever we're doing, yeah, it's easy. It's like, all right, well, we'll do this. And it oh. sounds cliche, like not taking, like, oh, being afraid to take risks, because it's like, there's no real risk. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just putting out what you want. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it comes so natural. Like when we try to write that, it almost goes uh, like unnoticed by me at least. And uh, I don't know, that's a, it, it, it's, it's cool to think it's like, hey, you just, write what you want and what sounds good to you i think we've all got a lot of uh just like really uh very like really uh different music tastes too you know, we listen to a lot of different different things so i think it's nice to be able to pull from all those different uh roots or whatever you know yeah I, I always love when when you have that too because like yeah you can be you know like an emo band and do stuff but it's cool to see like an influence come through and like shine that you don't expect um or like the times when you see like a pop punk band that has like a drummer that only listens to really like hardcore and then you have all this like double bass for no reason but it's fucking sick and the dude's just fucking wailing back there and it's like okay like this is amazing like this took a twist on something that everyone's been doing the same way and it's kind of getting old but it's nice to see like a twist every once in a while Oh, yeah. Hey, that reminded me. How old were you when you found out that Andy Hurley was, like, super deep in the hardcore scene? Or do, do you know about that? I'm For blanking probably. on you. Oh, uh, I don't think I ever really figured found that out. Dude, uh, looking okay. back now, it makes sense. Uh, Dude, and looking look into at it, it. It's crazy. Like, he's deeply rooted he in, like, a bunch of, like, yeah, he, he played with a, I a can't, bunch of, I can bunch of like yeah, power power of... violence bands, hardcore bands. I think the biggest one was called Race Trader, um, which sounds like a racist hardcore band. But <laughs> I think it's actually like a black nationalist band, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then Pete Pete Wentz also played in uh, some other hardcore band that I, I didn't know, but I see people well, talk they, about it all. Taylor the has to get his Fallout Boy propaganda on the <laughs> product. <on the podcast. laughs> Pete and the, the the vocalist, what's his name? Patrick. Pete and Patrick My played with Pat. with the guy from uh, other band. Uh, wow. Why'd you bring it up? That's, you cringe. Know. That's cringe. I'm, I'm if like, if I knew this was gonna uh, take a Fallout Boy segment, I would have put Fallout Boy up on the up on the wall for this uh, episode. Well, dude, it's, it's so funny close. To Fall Out Boy, because I was actually going to bring up Fall Out Boy, and then I was going to bring up um, Jimmy Eat World. Now we're talking. Because I saw, I saw Jimmy Eat World and Fall Out Boy a couple months ago, and uh, dude, Jimmy Eat World was like the best live band I've ever seen. They sounded so great. They didn't skip a beat. Crispy. I went in thinking like, I know like three Jimmy Eat World songs. It'll be cool. By the end of it, I'm like, damn, I, I like subconsciously knew like the whole set. The whole set. Like I've heard every <laughs> song a million times. Um, Fall Out Boy was iconic, but damn, they were sloppy, dude. They were sloppy. <laughs> Pete Wentz had a flamethrower base, so he was just shooting flames and stuff. And they had they had fireworks going off every time they like drop into a chorus. So you know you're sitting there trying to enjoy the song, the chorus hits, you're <laughs> jumping out of your seat. Like, what the He's hell on is his, that, dude? He's on his Gene Simmons shit, dude. It just gets to the point where it's like, okay, we get it. We're we're here for the songs. We don't need to see the pyros the entire time. Hey, thanks for the memories, boys. The uh, <laughs> the craziest thing was, you know, Pete Wentz is not the front man of the band, and he 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 had hair down to like, I mean, it was like it was like down to his back. He looked kind of 
<laughs> kind of messy. I'm just saying, man. But anytime the camera would zoom in on his face, the whole place would just, it was louder than it was the entire night. Every time it was on his face, it was like, yeah, they're iconic. That's for sure, man. Yeah. Um, Who had Fallout Boy on this podcast on their bingo card? Let's go. <laughs> Do you have a favorite uh, Fallout Boy album? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think the There's only like- album I have on vinyl is, uh, I think, Take This to Your Grave. I think that's the only yeah, one. Yeah, there's the right answer. I, I mean, I mean that one and like from under the cork tree were like the main ones I ever listened to. But I think probably uh, uh, take this to your grave was probably the one that I listened to the most. That was the same with me. Like uh, I, I don't listen to Green Day, Past American Idiot. I don't listen to Fall Out Boy, Past from Under the Cork Tree. Uh, Blink. I don't really <laughs> fuck with them. Past self titled. You know, oh, look, you're getting the zone. Uh, neighborhood, <laughs> neighborhoods, bro. Come on now, uh, neighborhoods. No, yeah. up all night. I'm gonna ban. Well, see, see I, even, I like, I barely listen to Blink. Like, growing, so you know, I grew up in a town of like, at this point, it's probably three thousand. It was probably like around there, maybe a little bit less. And like the the kids that I hung out with that were, you know, we were the like the alternative in our entire high school of like four hundred people. Like, so it wasn't like a lot of us, uh, but like. They all listened to Blink, and it was just kind of to the point where, like, I was just like, okay, like, I get it. Like, I'm over it. Like, yeah. And so, yeah, I'm the same way where, like, I'll listen to, like, some of the hits, but usually I don't pass, like, a certain certain album. Uh, and I'm just like, okay, like, I got it. Like, <laughs> so, none of that. None of the, It's all pre Mass Eva then. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Okay. It, it's it's pre breakup. Let's, there we go. There you go. Yeah, That's, yeah. I hate to say it because I love Blink One Eighty Two. But do you like they, any? Do you like any of their offshoot bands? Do you have a preference one way or another? Uh, yeah. Like their offshoot bands were good. I think I like Plus Forty Four. I listened to uh, that album like religiously, um, which yeah, is funny phase. to me. I had a phase. Uh, well, yeah. It was good. Yeah. Uh, and then. Boxcar Racer was also really solid, I thought. I, Boxcar. I was going to say, I think Taylor probably prefers Boxcar. I don't know. Uh, I read online one time, someone wrote a little paragraph somewhere. It's really interesting. When you listen to Blink-182 self-titled, you can listen to songs like Astinia or um, All of This, and it kind of sounds almost like pre-Angels and Airwaves. But then you have songs mm-hmm. like Here's Your Letter or Go, and it sounds more like Plus 44. And you can really tell the band was like splitting at that point. And I don't know, it's just weird to listen to that album in that context. Um, but I love Bus 44, Boxcar. I don't really like Angels and Airwaves, though. I, I just. Yeah, I, yeah, I also wasn't a big fan of Angels and Airwaves. Mainly, like, I'm not like a big, like, Tom DeLong guy, I guess. Like, he's okay. I don't have beef against him. It's just like he's not, like, my favorite. Mainly, <laughs> and I know, I know one reason for it is like, I know this dude's never gonna listen to this, these podcasts. So like, I don't. Know, I don't know <laughs> Tom, cover uh, your ears. Tom, don't cancel us, please. No, it's not even. It's not even Tom DeLong. So there was there was a guy in my local scene back when I was like booking shows, and like Iowa, we're all spread out. There's not a lot of bands in our like pop punk scene. So like, if there's if you need people for a show, it's usually you're you, you're reusing the same people all the time. And this this guy that lived nearby, like, put him on the shows, but he was. He, like he idolized and i mean oh, idolized tom delong he had tom delong signatures he had his his uh pedals were set up just like tom delong everything he played sounded like angels and airwaves no uh, shit. it was just it was just it was it was so much and like it didn't help that like we like he he was an okay kid but like he was also like one of those that like his mom like is spoiled a lot so like paid for his whole school yeah. and did all this and it's just dude. like dude like i can't do this anymore like dude, this is weird this is really weird man me and frankie keep looking at each other and we have a buddy that i grew up with that kind of he really liked tom as well it's the same it's the same story <laughs> had, a lot, had a lot of gear really really liked it signature you know, gear yeah maybe. the signature gear and the like the glow in the dark string guitar strings and stuff <laughs> so it's uh, crazy. So this this might be a hot take. Um, the new album. Oh no! Hey, don't get me started. The new album. Don't listen to it. It's not. No, it's not good. I love it. And Jeff loves it, but uh, I got you guys. Come it's on. all right, Jeff. We'll be... But Mark is so terrible on that album. 
Tom is the only thing that makes that. Leave Mark alone. Tom is the only thing that makes that album listenable. Leave Mark alone. Mark is so bad on that album, dude. It's crazy. Anyway, I'm just happy MGK didn't do a guest feature on it because I was on. I could have put money he was going to with him working with Travis. I was like, Blink's gonna come out here and it's gonna be like a a bunch of features. So I'm just glad I got an album that was. Uh, I enjoyed it for being a, a big Blink fan. You can zoom in zoom on me. No, in. keep it zoom, baby. <laughs> it, up, it, it did the I entire don't... time. <laughs> hey, what do you think about Sum 41 breaking up? Are you indifferent? Are you happy? Are you, are yeah. you happy about it? I, 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 it, it, my life has not changed uh, since yeah. they've, you know, like they're, they're good. They've been doing it a long time. I, I feel like they broke up before and came back, so it's kind of like... It's like when people are like, "Did you hear Ozzy's not going to tour anymore? What are we going to do?" It's like he'll he'll do something again in five years. Like he'll yeah, be, he'll, he'll be yeah. okay. Um, They're kind of dad rocky now, anyways. Like the past like four albums they put out, it's like we're going to rock your brains out. You're not excited for <laughs> heaven and hell. Rockabilly. Yeah. They're kind of like rockabilly now or something. Yeah, well, they rip too. Fuck these guys, dude. I don't know why they're hate so boys, dude. Me, me and Taylor, if 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 we were to like think about like our friendship having like a song or whatever <laughs> it's probably some say by some 41 like listen to that song after the podcast it's a heavy one it's emo but no we just used to listen to that one in like eighth grade and just walk around and be like damn we're so emo life is crazy, <laughs> life dude. Is crazy dude and now you know my, ever, life is crazy. Have you ever listened right. to the hell song at church camp huh <laughs> <laughs> on your ipod nano i have I fought <laughs> I fought many. You didn't know what song was playing to the start. Didn't anyway, you move? Yeah, I was gonna say we hijacked this talking about uh, our favorite bands from fifth grade. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Who would have thought that we would have talked about Fall Out Boy, Blink One Eighty Two, Sum Forty One, uh, some Jimmy Eat World, all on this podcast? There we uh, go. That's go. that's. That's the most de- like mainstream music we've talked about, I think, in any episode. Um, but, uh, but yeah, since the last time you the guys were on, <laughs> uh, since the last time you guys were on, yes, I have moved. I am. I've been living in uh, my new house for uh, last like year and a couple months because uh, we Very recorded cool. like you guys were actually. I think about. It, I think you guys were the last episode I recorded in that house. I believe uh, so. So. Um, yeah. So we're the, the first the we're space. the first band to be in both houses now. Maybe. Uh yes. I'll take it. Hey, I think I'll so. take it. You, you're for you sure, you're for sure one of like two. One of one two. two hey. One of two, baby. You're I'll seeing it two. here first. I'll take that too. I love and it. And I think I think the 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 other one. Uh, their episode comes out in a couple weeks. Um, Beat them. Oh. Couple weeks after, couple weeks after this episode. Uh, it comes okay. out. Um, uh, well, that's with uh, "Excuse Me, Who Are You?" So everyone okay. tune into that. Um, oh yeah, no, that'll be a great one. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, th- this uh, this August lineup is pretty s- stacked. Um, also, during this August month, uh, for you know all the listeners, um, you know, I also the the podcast turns five, and I hit two hundred episodes in August. So oh, yeah, congrats! Hell yeah! Man. You guys that's are awesome. episode one ninety eight. Who would have thought I'd be this far? Not me. I love it. Hell yeah. Yeah, and, and real quick, I know you said you had you had the 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 anniversary show. That was at Gabe's, right? Yep. Yeah, out there in Iowa. Yeah, we, we played Gabe's once. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. It was cool. It was a lot of fun. That was with the uh, old Bobby and Nolan. Yeah. It's like I'm trying to remember exactly I'm trying to remember the inside of the venue. Wait, was that Indiana? No, no like Iowa was, City. Was, Iowa City. Oh, where we stayed with the oh, guy right. trailer. No. Yeah, he had the magic wand. Yeah. <laughs> I barely remember that show. I don't remember yeah. that. We've been there, I guess. Yeah. All no, right. I, 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 I remember it. Never mind. I'm going to I remember our I band think... got stuck in his yard the next morning when they tried to leave in right. a mud pit. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, that was no, I think, I think we did mention that briefly on the last episode because I. Because there's been like a few bands that I found out like that have played Iowa City and like that was my old stomping grounds going to Gabe's like that's my one of my favorite gotcha. venues ever, um, but yeah the I had the five year show there, um, hopefully do um, more future fest but probably more in the Twin Cities um, for those ones uh, I got a venue in mind I just gotta 
get the ball rolling and figure out for 2025. Uh, oh, yeah. Start building it from there. Is that a Life Lessons banner in the background? Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. They're from here too. They're the homies. Yeah. Oh, wow. Just not saying that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like off to the side. Yeah. I always forget that they're from Oklahoma. I think it got mentioned on, I think someone commented on the, on, oh, I'm going to blank on their name. And they were just on, um, hold on. I'm going to feel bad. Got to look at my phone. <laughs> oh, on the King Pink episode, someone commented there, and they oh, mentioned okay. the Life Lessons flag, and I completely forgot that they were from, uh, from your guys' neck of the woods. Uh, one of their members gifted me free tickets to Tom Segura last December. He posted on Facebook. He's like, "I can't go. Will somebody buy these tickets?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'll buy them." And he's like, uh, "You just fucking take them." And I was like, "Really?" <laughs> so that was cool. That's just That's a random factoid of the day. Hey, it's those local homies, man. Put that yeah. in the comments and you'll get into an L dub show for free. That's the trivia <laughs> question. Yeah. <laughs> comedian, Tom Segura. Uh oh, I, I, I want to talk. Sorry, go ahead. I remember that band that he pointed at that you. Patrick and Pete were in. They were in the, the band with the dude from Rise Against. What? Yeah, they used to play in a band. Patrick. Patrick and Pete, yeah. From Fall Out Boy with the dude from Rise Against. The lead singer from Rise Against, yeah. That's weird. Anyway, so sorry. Anyways, I, had to, sorry. I, had, I had to get that one off. It was going to bother me if I didn't <laughs> if I didn't mention that one. So. Uh, no, you're good. I, I We've we've had a, a few tangents, and I love it. You know, always, I'm always down for it. Um, you know, I was going to say this earlier, because you were talking about how you don't like the new Blink record. And I was going to say, for people that don't like the new Blink record, I have a record for you to listen to, and that is Prudence by Limp Wizards. Yes. Um, oh, let's you know, go. That's why he's a fucking pro. Uh, you know, uh, I've mentioned it on a lot of episodes, and you guys probably know this, uh, is I love sound clips in, in, you know, emo and all that stuff, but just sound clips in general and, like, songs always add, like, another feeling to, to, to the song. And uh, you guys kind of don't do, like, a like a recorded sound clip of, like, you know, a, a TV show or anything like that. But you start off um, Can't Talk to Steve with, like, the sound of, like, a venue on the inside like on the other side of like a door and you can you can tell someone's outside because of the muffleness and then it's just kind of like that (sighs) okay kind of getting ready and then you hear the door kind of open you go in and you just you feel you feel that moment it kind of takes you to a place adding that to that song and then going into that especially right after uh bulldozer uh is just like so cool to to add that feature in there like what what was the thought process behind adding that into can't talk to steve i'll be perfectly and completely honest um i think trace might have just done that uh i'm sure we talked about it when we did it what i don't remember i don't remember it i I guess i'm the only one that remembers it it was originally going to be paired with another song on vibe Mm. yes and okay he's right so that intro and was Jeff, gonna yeah that intro was gonna remember, yeah. Jeff was right. gonna go into that into another song on vile but after the fact exactly what you just said it gives like this ambiance that we're like oh shit that fucking kind of like that's sick it, right you know and, like when i hear it it's like yeah it's like you're, you're getting out the car going to the show you just fucking snuffed out your cigarette and you're about to yeah or whatever you know right it's like, uh it just I always pictured it's like, yeah, you're, you're going to a local show. It's Friday night. And it's like, here we go. You know, and it, with how that song kind of builds at the beginning there and to where it finally kicks when you're in it, you know, it's like a, it just, it, it kind of worked out perfect, but yeah, no, that originally, and I, I, I can't remember, remember song what song it went into. I don't remember. Either. I didn't even remember that. that ha- but we, right. we had something cooked up to where it would have kind of continued that conceptually, but, uh, that didn't work out, but we liked how it turned out so much that we just kept it. Yeah, like it, it's it's funny that it's a like the song itself was removed from from Vile to be its own, you know, be part of Prudence. But it's funny that like an intro that would have went on a different song also mm-hmm. kind of like made its way back on in in, in saw the light of the day. Um, but yeah, it works so well. It kind of like it puts you right in that mindset of, of like 
you know, that kind of like, like you said, kind of putting out a cigarette. I don't even smoke cigarettes, but I was like, I feel like I'm putting out a cigarette right now. And then like, <laughs> and then like especially like, you know, it's like a, it's like one of those moments where you get off work, all your friends are already at the show and you can yeah. hear it bumping in there and you're just like, okay, I got to like get out of this one mindset and like get ready to like go in to this. And then you're like, okay. And then you kind of go in and then, yeah, that build up into the rest of the song is just like fucking hits so well and it just message mess it meshes so well um that like i was like dude fuck yeah and then you know can't talk to steve ends and then your boys got it on repeat so it starts right back in with drowning out um and it works really well to to kind of continuously listen uh was was the plan i know we kind of pulled two songs and kind of it was all kind of like during this vile time and like especially drowning out coming after but was it always kind of the thought of I know you guys mentioned trying to get something out kind of quick, but was it always the thought to do just a four song EP or was there more that might not have made the cut for prudence? Yeah, I, I think we tried and it's just, some of the stuff felt very rushed. Some of it felt like, okay, well, I mean, we could do this, but why, you know, it, it didn't, it, it was just a lot of the, I don't know, repetition's not the same word, but it, you know, it, it didn't, it didn't feel worthy of putting out and like those songs we cut from steve we knew pretty early on once we had recorded everything that those weren't going to make it or cut from vile or yeah excuse me uh, steve and all those when they were cut from vile we knew pretty early on they weren't going to make it yeah I think, and, that, I think that was the idea pretty early on that i kind of had that I, I wanted them maybe as like a backup kind of thing you know or if we did a re-release throw those or something but Some b-sides or something and like I said, we wrote a bunch of stuff that just we kind of either shelved or I was like, yeah, let's let's just kind of try it, try it again. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And uh, uh, I think it worked out well, just in the sense that we didn't want to wait a year and a half, two years to put out something. Uh, and so Frankie mentioned earlier, he was like, he kind of challenged us. He's just like, yo, let's let's not just like uh, sit still in a sense, you know, like we got uh, the motivation right now to do it. So let's just uh, get after it. And if you hold yourself accountable, then, you know, it, it's easy to procrastinate and be like, well, well, we'll touch it up and we'll do this and we'll get in the studio later. Or, well, we, I can't drive to Tulsa to do, you know, so it's like uh, that challenge. I think it, it was healthy in the sense that uh, after coming off all these songs that we spent all this time with, it was nice to know, like, well, we can still turn around and put out something that we're proud of. Crank something out. And Crank something that, out. you know, like like I said, those ones we cut, it was like, well, that doesn't really represent what we're trying to do or the vibe or what we're, or, you know, the quality even. And so, like, I think it worked out. How it but, yeah, it was a little rushed, but in the sense that we were kind of trying to just challenge ourselves and be like, well, like, what can we do here without – just like uh being stagnant right and it's it's good that you brought that to the table of like hey i want to challenge us to be able to do this because like you said it's it's like also with like any job that anyone works like you kind of get to a point where you're just like all right it's it's monday at seven o'clock again like i gotta go to work and like you just get in that routine of just like doing the same thing especially working on vial for so long to be able to kind of try and just kind of turn the system upside down and just be like, okay, let's try and do this in this time frame and just see what happens. And like, just kind of, it, it, it's nice because those moments kind of give you a nice like reassurance and like refresher of like, oh no, like I'm not bored with this or like I can still do this and do something like think outside the box and like keep it going after, especially like, you know, dealing with any record for so long, you kind of, whether you're writing it for three years or getting it done it takes you at least two years sometimes for some people so it's just like that's all you've thought about and you feel like that's all you can really do when you're in that box but to give yourself that challenge to be like let's do something else and it work and let you know that like oh no like we we have a whole bunch in the wheelhouse that we can still do this i i like we still got this and in, in essentially yeah, a hundred percent. And not to cut you off, I was just gonna say real quick too, and it kind of pulls something out of you too if you look at it the right way. You know, like if you go on with the wrong attitude, then yeah, sure it's gonna suck, and you're not gonna come up with anything you like. But it also, yeah, you feel like okay, well, let's do it. You know, and then 
you know, I'm proud with what we came up with. Yeah, that, so. I'm the biggest like poo poo butt in the band about like <laughs> wanting to fucking take forever uh, and like really hash things out. And so, just being perfectly honest, uh, like uh, drowned out when we very first started writing it, I was like, this isn't typically like the type of stuff I write in my head. Like I don't know. Uh, but I remember Frankie just being like, no, let's push through this and see it through. And I'm so fucking glad we did, you know, because it's like, like Jeff keeps saying, it's like a challenge. And when you challenge yourself, you can turn something from like, yeah, this is okay to being like, oh, I actually, I do like it. You know what I mean? Uh, so seeing things through, it's an important thing. And I also want to say, we're talking about kind of, you know, I guess the term would be like production hell, being stuck in the process of just writing and never being good enough. <laughs> Dr. Dre kind of fucked it. He didn't fuck up his career because he's obviously really successful, but don't know if you're a hip hop head, but he had an album called Detox that it's been like 25 years and it still hasn't come out because it's just been in production hell. It's never been good enough. And it's like, you know, he could have had that album out 20 years ago if he just held himself accountable and, you know. Yeah, I think at some point it's it's just very cathartic to to just release the music or, or just release like art of any, any form. Um, just to like kind of have that that weight lifted a little bit you know you're not you're not worried about well we've got these songs we still haven't released or whatever you know so it's like uh, it's it was really freeing for me to just be able to think about the next uh, step in the process of things um, and yeah I'll say like my, like my goal yeah was to have uh, four to six songs on the release and I think it got to a point where um, we probably could have done six songs, but I thought let's do four that we're like proud of instead of trying to do, you know, the two that we've had from Vile and then an additional four that like, you know, let's do Drowned Out and Control of the Lead versus like four more that are kind of like half, half cooked or whatever, you know. Yeah, then, I feel that because like four for this EP is really good. I could see it being, you know, five or six, but really like as much as I want to see like more of this, this EP, those other two songs would have to be so much in line and like have the same feeling and like just complete the vibe where, yeah, if you already have two that you know are going to be on this and then two that are kind of newer that kind of fit that it, it's one, it's a tricky thing to be like, Oh no, like we, we can still do this. And like, if they're not right, then like, you know it, and they're just never going to fit. So it's like, okay, like these we're going to show for a little bit, see what's coming next. But like, it ends up just being this four and like this four works so well together, even with bulldozer in there, like kind of throwing that twist. Like it's still, I love this whole EP. Well, I, I'd rather leave people wanting for a little bit more than having people like turning it off. Cause they've, they've had enough of it or whatever, you know, got their fill and then some. So. Well, I also feel all like it's a, uh... It's almost like you cleanse the palate create uh, creatively a little bit now. It's like okay, oh, yeah. we're moved on from vile. We're moved on from this. We we've said what we said from there, and so now you know uh, everything that's cooking up now is like, all new fresh stuff. And uh, uh, I don't know it. It feels good because uh, you're not kind of bound to anything anymore, mm -hmm. or maybe that's something like we put on ourselves a little bit as well, but it's just like, yeah, creatively now it's like, okay, well, it's an open book, you know, like who knows, we might get that fucking, uh, uh, no nicotine in hell sooner than later. Who knows? Like, you know, coming, <laughs> might be coming. <laughs> might start practicing. <laughs> well, I'm definitely ready to see it, uh, when it fully comes through, but it, it's, it's nice to see you guys embrace yourselves and like, just, put out this new EP like it like I said uh you know it's it's fucking solid it's been great to listen to like I'm stoked it, it's always whenever I, I'm listening to someone's stuff like I, I one I try and listen to it you know as much as I can especially the day up to fully get in the mindset you know we're sitting down here at we sat down at like 6 30 so I've spent you know half my day at least like listening to this EP uh -huh. but it's a solid EP where like I don't mind hitting that repeat button and being like, okay, let's, let's go through this again. Sometimes I'll let it kind of play out and then just see what my phone brings up. Cause sometimes I'll find like other Oklahoma bands just from like the algorithm. And then yeah. I'm like, okay, I listen to a few songs. Let's go back into this and, and experience it again. And it's just a solid, 
uh, jam oh. all the way through. Uh, that's great. Yeah, and that and a great way to uh, hear about all. There's so many good locals. We talked about it earlier. Just uh, Oklahoma, man. Wow, there's so many bands going on right now. Well, it's it's cool too because we we heard about the podcast through Ben Quad. Jeff yep. hit up um, Ben Quad and was like, "Hey, who who do we need to talk to? That's like kick ass." And the first name they said was Beers and Bands. So kind of like, well, sir, cool, cool moment. Uh, you know, like I said, yeah, okay. dude, and and that I feel like that set off like a chain of events um, with the Oklahoma scene because you know it was Ben Quad, you guys. I've had. Uh, the others like us, Red Sun, King Pink, um, and I have a few that you know I've kind of talked to them. And we haven't fully set something up, but they're it'll happen one day. And you know, like have you talked I, to I, I'm, uh, that's that's the one that like I we've we've chatted a couple times okay. and like uh, okay. it'll it'll happen at some point. I think it, that one's just gotta we're waiting for the right timing. What sure. about photocopy? Yeah, the homies no. Of photocopy. No, have you heard of photocopy? They're pretty sick. I think this is the first time I've heard of photocopy. So yeah, go check out. They photocopy. toured Heart Attack Man. They did a thirty. Oh no 30, shit! And the crazy part days, about that, yeah, they did like a thirty-five 40, day, forty day tour. full U.S. tour with Heart Attack US. Man, and they had they got really lucky, man. They formed like literally like a year maybe before. They were a band for like a year before they went on tour with Heart Attack Man, but besides that, they had only played like a handful of shows, five or ten shows, and I think they got on that tour. There was, no, a, there, was a, there was like a, a Heart Attack Man super fan or something that saw him oh, at yeah. a house party and was like, hey, like, these guys are dope. Check them out. And I guess, uh, is his name Eric from Eric, Heart Attack Man? Yeah. yeah. He up or whatever. Hit him up. He's like, yo, go on tour with us. And they were like, all right, sure. <laughs> awesome. That's fucking uh, sick. Uh, but then, so like with you, man, I've been keeping up you've been pumping them out and going crazy with this thing, man. It's awesome to see. Like, it Dude, seems like I, I really got it in high gear right now. I, I appreciate that. You know, some days I feel like I'm just straight bumming and like, I, I'm not doing anything. Like I'm also really bad at social media. So like I'm everyone that follows me on Twitter, like I post basically when an episode comes out, maybe a couple other things, but like, yeah. I, I'm not even on my personal shit. Like I'm not that much out there. So like, I feel like no one, really get cares and then like i'll drop an episode and just like seeing all the love that like people give and like and like just everyone that like still wants to come on and hits me up is like oh no like i found you doing this like i'd love to come on and i'm just like fuck like I, that shit makes me feel good oh yeah. bro dude I'll, I'll i'll throw on elden ring and pop a headphone in and just be like who we got I'll, you know it's a cool way to just tune into something you you know it's like i would have never been exposed to them if i didn't you know have your pod to just tune in and check some stuff out so yeah and i i play elden ring all night long too so you got a couple pods maybe <laughs> you get a couple please. of them yeah, geez. <laughs> um well before we start to transition uh because i have some fun questions i want to want to throw out there but before we do that like is there anything that i might have missed between prudence or current Limp Wizards that we want to talk about. Do you have a, sh a shirt? Can you pull off that? I don't. Not with me. But, uh, <laughs> not a lot. We covered. We covered. It, it was a. Uh, we covered all the tour shenanigans and stuff. The first one, and then just catching up. Another oh, one. Frankie! Crazy. Frankie almost cut his finger off. Uh oh. I was gardening yesterday. I had Damn. a big pair of tears. I got it on the knuckle, so I didn't super glue it um, yesterday when I initially messed it up. So this morning, I brushed it up against something and broke it back open. So I had to super glue <laughs> it today. I finally got got it super glued today, but yeah, Jeez. I was gardening. You got to be careful cutting grass with scissors and, <laughs> and stuff. I guess I don't know. Uh, did we did we talk about Colorado? No. Do, do we? Do, do we, we can just do it. Do we, do we, do we talk about? We Colorado? can give it. Yeah, there's 20 second. Yeah, yeah. A, 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 a quick Colorado. Sean show. Reedy is also S. Reedy is the hero of this story as well. Okay. Um, Colorado was fun. We basically had two shows, uh, Friday, Saturday. So we left like Thursday at like 9 p.m. or something. Got there late as hell. Uh, we slept at a park in Pueblo, Colorado, hmm. which was a very nice. We were in a very nice part of town. 
And apparently not, dude. I've heard I've heard that's pretty normal for Pueblo. for Pueblo. Was it? We didn't well, get to it, I guess so because we were just sleeping outdoors in this park, like uh, a public park in the middle of the mm-hmm. town. The drowned out uh, single cover is actually a picture of Taylor laying on a concrete slab sleeping, in the middle of this park. Sleeping at that park, yeah, dude. And there's like sixty year old white women walking golden retrievers, like in like extremely upscale looking big mansions. All over. <laughs> we have this shitty suv and i'm sleeping on a concrete slab and they're just walking by me and yeah we, we definitely looked out of place nobody called the cops on it but then we we played it was cool we played like at a was that the anime store like the anime store we yeah. played an anime store that was wild uh it's fuji crazy. mountain or something like, yeah fuji fuji mountain anime i was like don't touch any yeah. of the, don't touch the figurines man <laughs> those anime figures are more expensive than uh i would have thought it was cool but then we stayed at a reservoir that night and uh, uh, camped out. Camped out. Had a great time. Uh, some swimming water. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Water. Wow. We lost some glasses, and a guy let us use his goggles. And we went down there, and you know, you see hundreds of fish right out in front of you. <laughs> it was a really cool, chill, uh, uh, chill night there. And then played Denver the next night, and uh, we hopped on uh, with some bull punk bands. It's pretty cool. So, and we learned our lesson. We didn't have any real crazy, scary stuff happen on this trip. So. <laughs> That's that's good. It. I'm proud of you guys. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we did. Oh wait, it's not crazy. It's crazy, Uh-oh. but it's not scary. So on the way back, we were like, it was Saturday. We all have to work Monday. We have to drive back to Oklahoma City. It's like a thir- thirteen hour drive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll be honest. Maybe some people were having some drinks. No one. <laughs> no one that was driving. S. Reedy did all the driving. No, he didn't. He didn't. Well, I was maybe drinking a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, between me and S. Reedy, we're. We're some drivers, man. We're I wake drivers, up, baby. I woke up and we're at a truck stop in the middle of fucking nowhere, in the middle of Colorado, and uh, there was a McDonald's. Oh yes. Oh yeah, I forgot you're it's, in. It's this is a little way. hazy for me, but there are these like really redneck, like cowboy looking teenage dudes. They're just like they, they were, were like, talking shit. To they us. were talking shit. They're like, "Hey, what are you motherfuckers doing?" And we're like, "What's up? <laughs> What's like, up, bro? You, you want to get? We weren't fighting. <laughs> we were just talking shit back. You want to get like, sturdy?" Yeah, you want you want to go, partner? And we end up sitting next to him in this McDonald's and just bullshitting with them. And then one of them pulls out their phone after he finds out that we're in a band. And he's like, "Yeah, dude, I make music." And he had like this satirical country rap project on Spotify, but it had like how many how many it listeners? Was, it was over a hundred and like twenty thousand. Hundred twenty thousand listeners. And this is some bumfuck town in the middle of nowhere, like at three in the morning. It is crazy. And he's that like, he's like, what are y'all doing? We're like, oh, we just played a show. And he's like, oh, who are you guys? And we told him, he's like, oh, that's cool. I do music too. And it's like, <laughs> oh wow. He kind of big dogged us. He did big dog us. Like, all right, guys. And then he got in his flatbed and fucking got the hell out of Let's there. Let's get back in the yeah. truck and you're going again. <laughs> Yeah, Sean made the overnight drive though. He, we we all went to, you know, I drove as long as I could. He woke us up like eight a.m. and it's like, oh, we're in Wichita now. All right. Yeah, Sean didn't sleep. Sean didn't sleep that that trip very much. So he was he was a madman. That's for sure. He's an absolute legend, a bad lad at best. <laughs> Dude, yeah, props to him. Was- like I, I always try to do overnight drives, and I would be like, all right, it's dark. I gotta. It also didn't help that, like, I got up, I was, you know, had the same schedule as everyone else in the van, so it's like, once everyone's up, it's kind of like, okay, we've been awake the entire day, and, like, I wasn't driving, so it's like, by the time you try to do a night drive, and you're starting to take off at, like, seven, you're like, well, I was at the whole show, too, like, I'm also tired, like, this is... <laughs> I'm doing overtime. Yeah. Dude, Frankie uh, used to be in a band with these guys, uh, this dude named Bobby drove from, was it, how do you do the Zoom, was it Reno? He drove from like yeah Reno to Bob. Well, so yeah, I was uh, I was playing in a band called Psychotic Reaction for a little while, and we were basically stuck in Reno, and uh, we had a bunch of stuff fall through. So we had like it would have been two weeks of us like camping in Salt Lake City, basically for a show in Salt Lake City, and then we ended up doing um, I forget what they call it's not it's not called Day Trotter anymore, but we had that booked as well. So we had some oh, stuff yeah. booked, but. Um, we were in Reno and we were trying to like see if we could book stuff or if we just needed to make the drive back home. And Bobby, after a while, got tired of us sitting around. So he got us all in the van and he made the drive like all at once. And I don't even know how many hours that was. I mean, I know Denver to Oklahoma City is like about 13 hours and Reno is probably 10 hours. Yeah, let's see what Reno is. And he drove it fucking straight, which is crazy. 
stuck in Reno is also uh, that the name of the new Fort Feldman album. It's like 23 hours. Can you see that? Yeah, that is that's that's insane. I think the longest run I've done was uh was from like the Iowa City area to New York City, like on Long Island. Um, and we did like it was me and my dad. We did that like a couple days before Christmas because we had a our aunt was visiting and we had to take her out to like where her son lives. And then we hit like a snowstorm in Indiana, and but yeah, like that's that was like eighteen hours straight. Um, I think I've done like another sixteen and a different one, but like, yeah, I, those, and those drives suck. Yeah, I remember uh-huh. one time, and I don't remember if I brought this up on on your guys' episode was um, we. It was it was the band that I would run with. It was our last tour, and we were supposed to play, like, Baltimore and then New Jersey. Oh no, we played New Jersey, but then we were supposed to play like New York, and then we were going to go to Toronto. But like New York fell through, so our friends in centerfolds from uh, uh, they're from Richmond, Virginia. They were like, "Hey, we have our album release show tomorrow. You guys show dropped off. We'd." Like, they were homies from, like, when we were, like, from their old band. So, we just happened to be in the area. We stayed with him, like, the night before or whatever. And he was like, why don't you guys just, after New Jersey, just come back down and then play our show. And we're like, oh, dude, fuck yeah. And then all of a sudden, at the same time, we're like, oh, wait, we have to go from Richmond, Virginia to Toronto. <laughs> yeah, this is going to suck. A lot of, like... Yeah. Exactly. So, like, the the show gets done. I went and I was like, okay, I got the backseat of the van because I have to drive in the morning. I passed out. Rest of the guys went and smoked the last of the weed. Two guys got up front to to drive. Uh, I woke up somewhere in Pennsylvania and they had said, oh yeah, we took a wrong turn. We drove past the White House and like they had somehow (laughs) taken a wrong turn. They were like downtown DC and all this shit, like passing all the monuments. And it's like, we had places to be, but uh, but then that day I drove us all the way to Toronto and then almost all the way back after the show. Cause wow. The, the promoter was like, you guys can't stay at my place. I got bed bugs. And we're like, yeah, fuck oh, that. Shit. We're not staying. Fuck Don't worry no. about it. We'll, t- <laughs> we'll, we'll find a rest stop. Uh, but then he was like, well, you guys can take a shower at our place if you want. And we're like, you just said you have bed bugs. Like, I don't even want to stand next to you right now. Like, we, we got to go. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be wearing like a hazmat suit around that guy. <laughs> no thanks. Dude, that just reminded me for some I just talked to Frankie about this yesterday for the first time in years. Uh I, I talked about the skate park we used to play at earlier. And like in 2013, probably, uh, you know, tiny moving parts. Yep. So they played the skate park, and at the time they weren't really they were just a touring band. Like there was there's probably like 20, 30 people there, you know, just the normal ass band. And they needed a place to stay. And uh, my mom was kind of wild at this time. Like, I could pretty much just, I could just have people over and she might not notice or she wouldn't care. She didn't really give a shit. But this night, uh, she was on her shit. And I went inside and I was like, hey, mom, there are these four guys from Minnesota. Uh, I know them offline and stuff. They're really cool. Can they stay in the house? She was like, fuck no. You're not, you're not having strangers in the house. I was like, god damn it. When so, he was like 16, 17, yeah, like made 16. him look bad in front of tiding movies. Yeah, so I had to go out there and be like, hey guys, my mom said no. Go <laughs> sleep in your van so in my driveway. They fucking slept in my driveway and I hung out with them and just smoked cigarettes until like four in the morning. And I was just telling Frankie yesterday, uh, it's just crazy how much they've blown up. And I, like, you know, they stayed in my driveway. And I, I, it's not that I didn't think they were going to blow up or anything. They were really good, but you just don't. You never, yeah, you never think about that moment when you're like living in of just like oh like we're just hanging out like being dudes smoking cigs and now it's like they're doing full u.s runs and shit like that yeah and i think at that time they had just come from south by southwest and like they were freaking out because they were like dude we've never been to texas that was crazy and now they've probably been to texas like 500 times you know it's just (laughs) just weird to think about like and they're still doing it too so that's cool but just talking about the motor with bed bugs made me think about that you were the the promoter with bed. That was that was me. I am four of you. Um, you know, it wouldn't be beers with bands unless I did the, my little beer segment. Um, as I normally say, you don't have to be drinking all these episodes because I would definitely do that for you. But I know uh, the three of you have some fine bevies in front of you. What are you? What are y'all drinking on this fine Thursday? So, I don't endorse this one. It's fucking terrible. Uh, I'm a type 1 diabetic, so I try to stay away from, like, uh, anything, like, 
like beer because it's just empty carbs. Uh, so I go with White Claws, but I have the nastiest White Claw. It's the passion fruit. It's disgusting. Mm. Um, even if you only drink <laughs> one of these, the next day at 2 p.m., I'll, at least me personally, I will still be burping that passion fruit taste. It's disgusting. <laughs> He's got some empties down here too. Yeah, I do got empties. We got a cranberry. We got a cranberry and then another passion fruit. Uh, see, he doesn't I, like them, but that's all. I he tried to get rid of. Them. <laughs> that's all he brought. He's been drinking them down all night. I, uh, he hates them. I, them. I buy the variety. Stay away. I buy the variety pack, so I get rid of the nasty ones first. Jeff, go ahead. Well, this one's gonna make everybody a little jealous, but uh, I'm drinking a local Oklahoma brew from Kubel uh, Ale Works, and this is the local Boomer Sooners, uh, the Boomer uh, Schooner. Uh, beer here. It's just a nice pilsner. Good, clean taste. And then uh, I get to uh, support the school that Frankie went to. Hey, Boomer. And then uh, then come football season, I'll be drinking a bunch of these too. Boomer! So there Next. we go. Next. Uh, just the football team. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm just smoking weed tonight. Legally. 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 Yeah, yeah, legally. We're in Oklahoma. Yeah. I have permission from. <laughs> it's like we're in Oklahoma. It's like, wait, can they smoke weed there? You betcha. Yeah, we're. Back well, yeah, it's from- Oklahoma. There's like nothing there, so like, yeah. there's no laws, right? Oh yeah, well, and they're backwards about everything else. But hey, the weed you can smoke all you want. You can do it wherever. <laughs> My favorite thing was whenever the uh, the medical first went legal, everyone started calling weed cannabis. Like they're like, I don't know, I smoke cannabis, and it's like, oh, <laughs> shut up, we're all smoking. That's weed. the thing. Shut it's medical. It's medical here. It's Where's not that? legal. Where's that dope at, yeah. man? Yeah. Give me that dope. So <laughs> technically, <laughs> Frankie is oh. Frankie's consuming a prescription right now. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 it's just Basically. my medicine. Just my medicine. <laughs> No, that's serious, Frank. Don't laugh. You're right. I'm sorry. Anyway, no, yeah. Uh, yeah, Coopell works, man. They're delicious. Hell yeah. Uh, in this episode, you know, I'm drinking something that I never really thought I would ever have on an episode of Beers with Bands um, because, you know, I'm not in college anymore. Um, so it feels. Uh, how do you weird. like? Is it Maddie? Keystones, baby. No, it's, it's good old. Ooh. Oh. Hey, Frankie's getting uh, stuck with my boys throwing a couple back you know what I'm yeah saying? if it, dude I, I i i cracked open the first one before i started the before like we got on and i was like damn this like brings back like some memories like not good ones but like just memories in general like that's all we drank my freshman year of college <laughs> just memories in general <laughs> uh and like i only have these for everyone wondering why why is michael drinking keystones if he doesn't like them it's i had a friend come to town probably like a I was I was out of town all that for June, but like before June, I had a friend come to town, and I know they really love Keystones, so I was like, "You're coming to town? I'll I'll make sure to have a case for you." And then just... we partied too hard at a wedding the night before, so when we got to my house, we didn't touch a single Keystone in my fridge, and I'm like, "God damn it! I still have a full case of Keystones that I need to drink." Uh, so they're going down now. They're hey. it's it's water. I have. I have a weird affinity for keystones because I, I worked as a carpenter for, or I can't even say carpenter as an apprentice to a carpenter for like four months. And every day at the end of the work day, my boss would have a cooler and he'd crack a damn keystone and pass one over. So that was the end of a good day. That's how you sealed it was with a good old keystone. keystone. So was that, was that 3% uh, He's no, no. six percent. We finally got the big boy beers around here. I don't know if you know about this, but Oklahoma, we had three percent beer there for a while, like for a long time. I, that was the highest I think, you could get. I think so, for some things in Minnesota, it's the same way. But I never heard that there was a six percent Keystone or five three or whatever it is now. Yeah, because I mean, most most beers are about like four and a half to five. Yeah, like you know, PBRs the 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 milk from the gods is like five <laughs> the milk from see the yeah gods. I was, honestly i'm i was surprised you're not drinking on one of those tonight because i thought man the zoom is killing yeah me. we're going yeah, we've never been on zoom before guys well it so i mean I, I will say zoom updated their shit so like it's it's crazy like it's it it's kind of annoying that. you have to like you have to like go in and like adjust the settings and all that fun stuff but uh no normally i would have some pbrs i think I have three, but they're like sitting out on the table, and I don't have AC, so it's pretty warm in this house. Yeah. Um, so I probably won't drink those. Um, no. But I have like a lot of other stuff that I need to get through that's been sitting in my fridge as 
This is a full uh, fresh <laughs> 15 pack. Uh, yeah. Do you like IPAs? It's it's very probably not. Like they're okay. they're so they're they're like heavy ish. Yeah, I was gonna say I try not to drink uh like I wouldn't call white claw beer, it's not beer, but like if it's I'm drinking seltzer. if I'm drinking something that's like not liquor, uh I try to make it light. But if I do drink something heavy, it's it's a F five, which is a beer that we have here in Oklahoma. It's an IPA. Ooh. Um so I was gonna, well. I was gonna see if I could maybe send you some, but I don't know how that works in the mail and stuff. But if you don't like IPAs, you <laughs> probably wouldn't like an F five. So I'm not gonna. You want it? How about this? It, when when you guys finally make it to Minnesota, you bring some with you, and I'll have one in person with you. Dude, the hundred percent. We'll, we'll just give you a sip. That's all you need to know. You won't <laughs> like <Okay>. it. <laughs> the, the only time we played in uh, Minnesota. Jeff almost died because he – I've never seen snow drifts as high as they are in Minneapolis in the middle of winter, and Jeff busted his ass getting out of the van. Do you remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Barely. Do you? I was going to say, you're pretty Barely. fucked up. But, yeah, uh, no, that was a good night. Those, had, uh, those you snow- remember what happened before on the venue, too, but we might have talked about that. I think already. we did talk about that. But, yeah, no, uh, yeah, no, those snow drifts, they were no joke whenever your, your equilibrium is uh, uh, altered. altered from a couple of these good <laughs> – Ice we're sipping on. Well, I'll make sure the next time you guys are in Minneapolis, you won't die. Uh, we'll figure <laughs> there we <that> go. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, that's that's a little beer segment for this for this episode. Um, you know, like you kind of mentioned, we did talk about a lot of fun stories uh, on the last episode, the crazy stuff. Uh, which, if you haven't listened to that episode, at least go listen to those stories because they're fucking crazy uh and it's it's great that these dudes are still alive after a few of those i was gonna say Um, unfortunately all true as well too uh but you know i wanted to i had some like fun questions i kind of want to ask on top of everything Uh, like we can dive into some stories too like obviously you know we kind of talked to our prudence i have no time limit we'll fucking hang out all night um but like we we've been talking about this oklahoma scene and all the homies that have you know are popping off doing all these things. But one question I've never gotten to ask uh, a band from Oklahoma and the Oklahoma scene is let's say someone's listening and they're like, yo, we keep hearing about this Oklahoma scene. I want to go play there on like, I want to route a tour, possibly stop through. What are some like key venues or your favorite venues to play at that they should like keep in mind to, to possibly try and book at? It's a great question. Okay, first I would say I think it kind of depends on um, maybe genre. genre, obviously. But then um, this might sound kind of weird, but like I used to be a huge proponent of like I'm only going to play all ages shows. But just due to the way the world works, sometimes that's not always – okay, it's always doable, but, you, you know, I guess I'm copping out here. Sometimes- it, is, it is always doable, but I feel like just looking at a lot of people's like flyers recently – a lot of their shows, depending on where you're from, you know, they have lately been starting at like eight. And then usually if it's, it, you know, if it's starting at eight, you figure, you know, three to four bands, it's going to at least go for till 11 or to midnight. That's already like ends up being like a 19 plus show. So, but that's not always like the band's decision for people listening. Like that's sometimes like the venue or, or whoever booked the show, but yes, it, it sometimes is unavoidable. Uh, uh, and for a touring band, point. for a touring band, I think it depends. Like you know, if you're on the road and you know Oklahoma City is a stop for you between like Houston and Denver, you need gas money. Like that's a long ways. So yeah, you might want to play a bar because you're gonna make more money in a bar. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It kind of depends on. Or, but if it's just a band from like Tulsa or Kansas City, somewhere not that far away, that kind of changes the conversation. You know, I think it kind of depends on the what they're looking for that do they want more exposure or do they want do they need gas money well and to put names out there too uh i would say in norman like theopolis Theopolis, that's kind of our home base in the sense of like if we're wanting to have a show that we can get a good crowd at and they're going to take care of you the the sounds like the sound is good you know it's like theopolis and norman if you're going through there that's obviously number one i would say if anyone's listening that's booking that's like Right outside of Oklahoma City, it's like a fifteen-minute drive from downtown Oklahoma City. So it's, yeah. it's I like uh, Fifty First Speakeasy. Yeah. That's in Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. 
and then to Taylor's point, like a, a, a bar or so in Norman, like, excuse me, uh, the deli, the deli in Norman deli. Hit up your boys in Loop Wizards because we're sickos and we'll play with anybody. So yeah, uh, wherever. But yeah, the deli they they always uh, take Red, care of us real good too. I, I would Red also Brick. say I would say uh, in Oklahoma City, Resonant Head is a, a pretty little popping popping spot. It's new, last couple of years. Uh, uh, one spot maybe. I'd shout out for uh, touring bands, uh, the Sanctuary. I'm talking about all ages places. Sanctuary. Yeah. They're all ages. They're purely DIY. They're fucking sick. Good um, location. Too. Good location. Pretty centrally located in Oklahoma City. Another good one with kind of a semi-built-in crowd with a, I mean, the vibe and like the place is actually just a really nice place too. Like another kind of bar venue is 51st Speakeasy. They're a great spot. They took care of us when we were there. Uh, <clears throat> you're going to flash up to Tulsa. Uh, I mean, the Vanguard's a great place. Vanguard, Sound Pony. Yeah. Uh Barkingham Palace. Barkingham I'd say Palace for Bar- DIY Barkingham show. Barkingham is, the, is the, the house show spot. Barkingham, we've been playing Barkingham in Tulsa for 10 years. They did, they did the 10 year party last year. Picture yeah. a house venue that can last that fucking long, man. And like, I know, that's, that's fucking intense. Like, that's, and these it's people, unheard of. So they I, have, like, like, it's almost a commune in a sense. Like, they got farm, like, back in the day, they had, like, farm animals and pigs, and you bring what you can, you know. It, she, uh, they've just always been a really good support for local music and taking care of people. I've never heard a bad it's story. Basically come out da- of it's basically in downtown Tulsa. It's yeah. pretty fucking cool. Man. I, I, uh, I play in another group. Um, we, we do Barkingham quite often, and we just did uh, something last month over there, and it was a big communal uh, community thing. They had uh, multiple venues that were doing uh, ha- having bands play, and they were showcasing uh, a lot of different art. And handcrafted goods and things like that. Uh, they were doing that at her spot and Mass Movements, which is a really dope spot as well. Um, uh, funny really thing about Mass Movement, Andy Hurley from Fallout Boy toured with a hard school. I'm not kidding. He played a festival there like a year hey, ago. Fallout Boy, let's go. We brought it full circle. Yeah, that's and we're back. Yeah, but now uh, I mean, those are just off the top of my head. Uh, some of like the great venues. All everyone we've mentioned, they take care of the the bands. Uh, it's never like an inconvenience type situation and uh, it's just you know that's who I would recommend and then obviously like I said hit up your boys because if, if we can't play uh, we might know somebody who could get you hooked up with yeah somebody from here because we might need to go to Missouri or Arkansas and so we'll be like what's up baby I think that yeah we do need to go to Missouri yeah no and that and all the Tulsa guys like you had the others like us on like uh they do a lot of stuff. I, I'm blanking on uh, his name. Sam. Sam. Yeah. Uh, he does Margaritaville uh, for the last couple of years up there in Tulsa. And uh, I know he does a bunch of other bookings and stuff where he previously had. And just like, there's a lot of good people that, <clears throat> from my experience, very welcoming. Just hit them up. And uh, if they can't take care of you, they probably know somebody, somebody who can. Somebody who can, yeah. You know? And that's the one good thing about like uh, the scene or whatever you want to call it going on right now is it's just everybody's supportive and just wants to play killer shows together and bring in whoever. Uh, yeah, so there's there's a bunch of good spots. Go ahead and replay that a couple times if you missed it. You know that, that's the one I recommend. Hell yeah, dude! Yeah, everyone. Uh, you know, make sure you're writing that down if you didn't do like Taking you notes. said and. Rewind it. Let's do it again. Go make sure you're touring through Oklahoma if you have something booked. If you're able to, if the routing makes sense, um, it's you know it's 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 nice to see. And I've I've said this multiple times. It's nice to see this scene kind of emerge and like be in the limelight and like all the cool stuff that's coming out of Oklahoma. You know, not just the people that I've had on, but we all, you know you also talk about Cliff Diver, who's also from Oklahoma, and like I know Lippy there's baby. countless other bands. Uh, yeah, they, that, uh, they just they just announced a new record the other day too. Yeah. Diver. Um, but like I, I know there's countless other bands that I've haven't encountered yet that uh, I'm sure will will pop up and, and it, it's always fun to see. Um, so everyone, keep an eye on on Oklahoma. It's just it's okay. like I said earlier. It's nice to see. Like I, I know like the three like hot spots. Like if I had a calendar, like not calendar. It's not a fucking calendar. If I had like a <laughs> of, the, of the of the states in front of me, 
I could like pinpoint like the th- like the three hot spots that I've really done. Uh, well, four I guess if you count Philly too. But like, it, it's just really nice to see um, see happen. Um, that feels good too. Yeah. Sorry, I gotta switch to the. Uh, there we go. Get another one. You know. Uh, Cranker. They're going down t- way smooth for a Thursday. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. This wouldn't be a normal episode if uh, if we didn't end off with some so a few stories. I know we talked about a lot of stuff the last time you guys were on, some crazy stuff. Obviously, you know, it's been a year and a few months since then. What else has happened besides, uh, I know we kind of talked about that whole, uh, you know, uh, Colorado uh, redneck dude that just, I, like, I just know, like, I'll, when you mentioned that he just drove off in his flatbed truck, like, I just assumed, like, <laughs> it's got, like, stacks instead of, like, yeah. a tailpipe. It's got, it's got, it had stacks, right? 100%? Yeah. Burning oh, dude. It was a dually, I mean, yep. this dude just, he had unloaded the hay bales before he went to the, it was, a, like, an McDonald's. interstate McDonald's. We were it wasn't McDonald's, even a regular, yeah. it was, like, half gas station interstate, like, diesel trucks and the barbecue yeah. joint in the back. It looked like the speed, honestly. Yeah. Saturday. You but said it mind, and I didn't envision it. In, mind, in, 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 this, this kid was like 17 or 18, and I'm not lying. He busted like out high school, He yeah, busted yeah. out his phone and had like 120,000 monthly listeners. Like, like, oh, like, oh, 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 all right. Fuck <laughs> you, dude. You're going to big dog me? All right. We were ready to uh, uh, right. play basketball, uh, trash can trash can basketball with him. Yeah. We were trying to square up. Because, yeah, he wanted to square up, and he was like, well, can you shoot? Can you play basketball? Can you play? Probably not out here. Now I'm trying to think of good stories. Uh, we've had some good shows. Um, we did uh, uh, emo karaoke. Yeah, that was really that was cool. fun. That was that was like we got back in Colorado. I think the next thing we did was a big emo karaoke thing where we we opened, and then they uh, uh, they did like a two or three hour long uh, emo karaoke where you could uh, uh, sign up for and stuff. So mm. we were just like the, the opener, which was cool. Um, and I, I think they've had King Pink on and uh, maybe Sunfo on it. Uh, well, in the house band that did it, uh, was that the Dom Talongs? Uh, they Dom had Talongs and the, uh, uh, Joey from Cliff Diver. They had a bunch of guys from Cliff Diver. Like and mm. and, and I think they kind of did, uh, was it through being cool? I think through being cool, that's yeah, who it was. That's yeah, right. they were involved as well. So now, now doing, doing that show, was there any covers that you guys worked into your set to kind of? get the vibe going for the SEMA karaoke? That's a good question. We thought about it because we had worked on a few. But at we the had, time, we were playing hybrid we moments could have done, stuff. We could have maybe done hybrid moments. Our deal was is we didn't want to take a song that somebody might have requested. Well, so we, we, we even brought up doing hybrid moments. And, mm-hmm. and I think somebody was like, well, yeah, I mean, like we have it on there too. So we'll see if anybody picks it or not. We were like, ah, well, we don't want to rope, you know, like, yeah, that's kind of their whole deal, and it's like, well, they're 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 you can't play Mr. Brightside that fight, you know. <laughs> Three people got it on there, they're, but they're right. doing us solid by even having us out there. So let's just let's just do our thing because you had you had a lot of people of there, let them, let them do their thing, you know. So. Yeah, that shit was cool to me because I kind of realized I was like, man, uh, there's people here who like they go to concerts, they don't go to shows, if that mm. makes sense. Like, yeah, so. Yeah. I hate to use the term normie because, like, dude, I'm a normie. I got a fucking normal job. You know, I just come so home normal. and play video games. Um, but for lack of a better term, there were some normies there, you know, and it got us in front of them when normally we probably wouldn't, have, you know, right. some people that don't go to see local bands, you know. Um, so I thought that was really fucking cool. And the venue was super sweet, too. The sound was dope. Yeah, the venue is this place called Beer City Music Beer Hall, City. and it's like, I don't know. They they would host a band like the size of uh. Didn't they have like they drug church? Didn't they have plain white tees? Plain Did white tees played there a couple months ago. Oh, yeah, or like a drug church. It's like a good medium sized venue, and so it was a, a good sized stage to, to get to play on. You could hear everything. It was really fun. They're cool. about to. Ha- I just gotta shout this out because I cannot believe it's happening. They're about to host Daddy Fry. Who? Da- Daddy Fry. Daddy Fry Euro- oh. came in second in Eurovision, and he's yeah. a singer songwriter. From somewhere in Europe, I, I apologize. I can't. He's like a sweet, Northern, Sweden, Northern, maybe. Northern. I mean, like he's like six foot six, and he sings like this. Like it's. Just, I have no idea. It's so about. unique. Yeah, I know. And, and the Zoom is killing me. He's today. he's got U.S. Uh, 
No, there we go. Shake it up. We got, but he's doing like four or five U.S. dates, and it's like Lollapalooza festival here and there. And it just so happens that I guess he's coming through Oklahoma, and he's gonna play this like 250 cap room. Uh, that you know, I'm sure if he was in Europe, he'd be playing arenas and stadiums or something. And I'm just such a huge fan, so it's like. That'd be cool, like from playing there and then being like, I saw fucking Daddy Fryer there, dude. What's up? So look up Daddy Fryer, man. Okay. Eat I'll see. Rent. I'll see if uh, maybe when he's in the states, if he wants to come through. Hell yeah! There you go. <laughs> Speaking of people that need to come through, there's a guest I want to suggest that you should hit up. Okay. Oh, that's it. Uh, their name is God's Computer. I'm, I think we can all endorse God's, God's Computer. Do we all endorse God's computer? Yeah. You can't see me because the Zoom is killing me right now. <laughs> but yeah, I'm over. Okay. Now you see me. Yes, I, not, I not, endorse God's computer. Not from Oklahoma City. They're from Kansas City. <laughs> it hates me with the Zoom, dude. All right. <laughs> all I can say, the only way I can describe it it's is killer, it's some man. of the most unique, vulnerable, eclectic music I've ever heard in my life. Uh, I, I literally don't know how to describe it. And uh, we, we, we played a show in was that Kansas City? Yeah, house show. House show. we played a house show in Kansas City on our little weekend run we did. And the original bill, I think some of the people had to drop out, and so they suggested this guy, and he jumped on the bill. And it's it's a uh, I don't know, like his music, it, it, it's very how would you like you say eclectic? I, mean, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's like, I don't know. I, but he's a very interesting guy, and we, we've had him come down. He's played the office with us in Norman. I guarantee he would come on your podcast. And he's, he's, he's just a, he's a cool dude, good. and he's, uh, he's, he's okay. one of a kind musically, too. And for the, just to set the stage a little bit, it's not a band. It's a guy with a laptop that makes all his own backing tracks, and his backing tracks are like metalcore, but then he like, like industrial, yeah. or industrial EDM yeah. type shit. But then sometimes he sings over them. Sometimes he raps over them. Sometimes he just screams over them. But I mentioned that his music is vulnerable. And I say that because, like, dude, he does shit musically that, like, I don't even know how he thinks of it. And then the fact that he can go on, he doesn't give a fuck. Like, he'll go on stage and he'll just, he performs his fucking heart out. And that's hard to do. You know, like, you've played in bands. You know, you everyone puts up a face. This guy doesn't put up a fucking face at all. There's, there's no bullshit to it. He just goes up there and plays the songs. Doesn't give a fuck. All right. I'll, I'll just say what, what everybody's been meaning to say. We're kind of obsessed. We're obsessed with this We're guy. obsessed. We, we love it. We're I'm going to message you on Instagram after this and remind you. God's computer. Okay. Hell yeah. Type uh, God's computer in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> what else do I have? Yeah, I can't. I don't have anything else. I don't think. You know, like, obviously, we can talk about whatever, but like, there's nothing in my head that I can think of. To Do you play off. Fallout Four? No, I never played Fallout. Oh, what? I was never like a. I was never like a big like. Like, I played like obviously like some Call of Duty and like some games, but like I never played like Fallout or or. Uh, Skyrim. Or, yeah, like. Yeah. I've never, yeah. So that means no Elden Ring either. No Elden Ring. I know I'm an Sorry, L7 but... weenie. Damn it. <laughs> now I've, I've probably put way too much time into Elden Ring to be perfectly honest. But yeah, we know. are you. I'm level four sixty nine. I think we got two hundred and seventy hours on this playthrough. I don't even know what that means. This playthrough? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? How many hours do you have total on it? Not as much as Rocket League, probably, but. Oh yeah, that's the that's the real love right there, right? True love. Okay, I got a, one more question for you. Yeah, what's up? Are you a are you a Weezer fan? Uh, I I don't hate Weezer. Okay. Uh, so like then you're not. Gonna... They... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, if they come on, like, I'm not like mad about it, but I'm also like not bummed if they don't come on. Right. I'm so very not... like down the middle. Right. Indifferent. Yeah. So you're not going to have like a very big opinion on Blue Album versus Pinkerton? <laughs> no. Okay, no, that's I'm, fine. That's cool. Yeah. 
I, so, would be the only so one I, I think I I don't think I talked about this on your guys' episode. Like I'm very weird when it comes to like what people consider like the hits for for a lot of bands and like like you said you're you're 30 31 i'm i'm 31 like we're we're around the same age but like i'm very different from most people in my age with like in the scene and like what they grew up listening to so like i lived in a town growing up of about maybe 200 people so i got a lot of my music from like the one high school kid that was on my bus which <laughs> he would just hand me mix cds and be like listen to that and i'm like cool and then i like found out about like Limp Bizkit and like just a lot of like fucking just that genre for a while. And then like I sort of, and then I got introduced like to Eminem and like we'll listen to a lot of Eminem. And then remember like when I first started like finding music on my own, I would drive to school and listen to fucking uh, Hollywood and Dead like all the time. Uh, yeah. Like that one classic album, everyone listened to it. I, I can't, I think it was like, I can't remember the name of it. Um, and then, so like I never listened to like pop punk or anything like that growing up and then i started dating this girl in high school and she introduced me to uh q's boy and for like hello goodbye we the kings so like i kind of got like that newer introduction to like poppier pop punk and yeah. then from there went into like free throw fo- forever came calling and like so i like i really came into like my music scene really like 2010 to like 2011 so like Yes, I know like the hits for like Blink, Weezer, American right. Idiot, but like everyone always has like a huge opinion about them, and I'm just like, they're they're songs, man. Like I like whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then they I'm look almost... at me like I'm the weird one, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I feel the opposite because I got uh, I was like, I mean exactly what you just said, but the opposite. I was super super into all the like, especially some Forty One, Green Day, and Blink. And I did not let go of that shit until I was, like, probably 17 or 18, which by that time, everyone else my age had kind of gotten into, like, what was current then, like, Title mm-hmm. Fight, Tiger's Jaw, uh, Sea Haven, you know, all that shit. So I was kind of late to that bus, you know. But on the other side of the coin, he was also the first, like, I've known Taylor since first grade, uh, went to the same kindergarten and elementary school. And uh, before I met him, I would just like I'd get home and like watch TRL, like I'm sure everyone did. Watch TRL and like just watch talk. Pokemon. Dog. Well, Frank, you're excluded. For it. Give me the Zoom real quick, Frank. You don't need to be in this conversation. But no, uh, would watch TRL and stuff, and I just listen like kind of top forty stuff. And Taylor was kind of the one who he was the first one that like put a guitar in my hands because he always played from a young age. <laughs> I remember him showing me specifically "The Young and the Hopeless" by Good Charlotte, mm. and uh being like at first going like oh wow because like my dad he's a big classic rock guy zeppelin floyd all the way yeah i mean name any of them and so like i always had a deep appreciation for like rock music and stuff and i enjoyed it but he was the first one to kind of show me like the good charlottes the green days the some 41 yeah dude you can be twisted and sad and play guitar Mm. you don't just gotta smoke weed he played uh Perfect by Sum Forty One at no, a school. Count- no, 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 no. You no. played pieces by Sum Forty One <laughs> at, uh, at his middle school talent show. By the way, you did some say. No, that was pieces. Was pieces. But that so was no, you did Mac- Macy Day Parade. He's talking about a fourth grade. Thing. Yeah, no, no, this was this was. I was in a lot of little kid town. Of, of <laughs> but I'm saying, I guess is, I mean, without him showing me all those bands. You know, who knows if I would ever even pick up guitar. So it's like it worked in that sense, right? Yeah, like I, I, I mean, bounce off like the whole talent show. I remember in high school, like my really good friends that like I used to tour with, and uh, granted, I used to just TM with them, but like they did like a Jimmy World like cover and uh, during the talent show, and like I think did probably like a Blink song or whatever. Uh, but, like that, like they all listened to that, and I was still like just you know. Bumming it up with my Hollywood Undead, you know. I used to know all those lyrics, and it feels weird th- saying that now, but uh, now because now they take off their mask and shit. Like it's yeah, and what happened? Right, the illusion's not fun. Um, but <laughs> it, it's 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 always crazy too to like think about like when you really came into not just like the music in general, but like when you came into like feeling like connected to it at that point. 
Because, like, yeah, I listened to all that stuff. Like, I wasn't connected to what Eminem was saying. I listened to it. But it wasn't until, like, probably, like, Forever King Calling and Free Throw, more like 2011 to 2012, where I was like, oh, no, like, I would, I somehow connect to this in a different way where, like, I want to listen to this still and keep going from here and, like, go down that hole, like, rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah something, the first time something actually kind of grabs a hold of you, uh, I, you just kind of, like, shot a memory into my head by saying that. Like, I, I can remember being in fourth grade, walking home from school, and a car drove by, and they were playing. It was a uh, <clears throat> BYOB was on the radio everybody going to the party real good something like and i i just i can distinctly remember right now that hard driving by and me hearing that and going whoa what is that and that next week i had hypnotized and mesmerized and it was on the damn walkman uh yeah, religiously you know yeah it's just weird like something like actually grabs a hold of you and you're like oh here we go like this is more than just like a, a catchy song or something it's like oh i like Dude, this <laughs> the worst part about being into all that shit when i was a kid and by kid i don't mean teenager i mean like i've been invested in pop punk since i was in second grade brother <laughs> <laughs> so my parents got divorced when i was in like second or third grade and i was listening to all these sad ass records uh <laughs> you guys already so know you guys already know i'm listening to these sad ass emo records and i'm a kid and i don't really have any context and my dad's going through a fucking nasty divorce at this time. And he'd come pick me up from my mom's house and, like, he'd want to listen to, like, All American Rejects. Yeah, well, he'd pull, <laughs> he'd, well, no, he'd pull up and the fucking Fall Out Boy album would be on, like, track eight. And oh, my, dad's a, a, my dad's a classic rock listening. guy. Dude. And I would bust him listening to, like, Fall Out Boy and All American Rejects. I didn't put it together at the time, but when I got older, I was like, Damn, my dad was fucking going through it. And he was like, <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's a, like, emo. yeah, he's like, yeah. you know, a 50 year old conservative white dude that probably listened, not probably, he did just listen to nothing but classic rock. And then he pulls up to pick up his son, and it's like, you know, it's the yeah, saddest Fall Out Boy song ever. You know? all, all I can think about is like, because if you fast forward that to like our generation, like, we'll have that experience, but it'll really just be like, we'll pull up somewhere and it'll just be like, I'll still pick my friends over you, like, just, like, fucking, like, that, like, yeah. that'll be us now, no, but it's funny that it was your dad then. Yeah, yeah. Imagine Jay rolling up to some newfound glory. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just you were true. Jay, what's wrong, brother? Yeah, my dad was literally <laughs> Hank Hill, and Frankie's never met my dad, but Jeff did. My dad is a carbon clone of Hank Hill, and so it's so <laughs> weird to imagine him being like, Taylor, I'm listening to Good Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this new Green Day record really rips. It's slaps. <laughs> it's slaps. Your mother left me. <laughs> you know, I know we talked Prudence, we talked Limp Wizards, we talked some stories. Had had really good tangents on this one. So it's 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 always nice when I get to do like a second round with a band because the first episode is always like kind of like getting to know each other, brushing off like like the nerves. And then the second time, it's just, like, straight chat the entire time, just, like, having a good time. Um, and, like, I can't stress enough how great Prudence is. Like, everyone that's listening, you see <laughs> uh, you see everything else that's out and coming out right now. Um, and, you know, Prudence, in my eyes, is, like, a top contender for a lot of the good stuff that's coming out this year. And I feel like it's a really good year for, like, the sound that people are doing. Like, obviously, we have... Uh, Moose Creek Parks copy paste. We have uh, King Pink's. Um, oh, I'm gonna blank on the name of the album, but like King Pink's album came out, which is also solid. Like it's just nice to see like everyone putting on like almost like their A game for 2024. Um, and and it's been it's been great to see, great to listen to, and I know everyone else feels the same way. Oh yeah, thank you, brother. No, I appreciate it. Uh, and I I agree to what you said about uh, just linking back up with you so much it's uh, uh yeah and the zoom keeps there we go yeah the heads pop up but no it's so good to get uh back and just chill and hang out with you for a little bit you've been doing cool shit and uh you know we're always so thankful to be able to come on and uh spend a, an hour or two with you so far i think we i like we're breaking the two hour mark we're at two hours dude. like now yeah, yeah. Michael, is your name really Joe Rogan? Because why do you keep us here so long? What's happening? Oof. 
Dude, and I, I don't talk about it as nearly as controversial stuff to be called Joe Rogan. Uh, but so, you know, we're good there. Um, yeah, I remember your Fallout Boy take. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that happened like 20 minutes ago that everyone totally already forgot about, right? <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> it's not like I was recorded, right? Like that no, was no. part of it? Okay, okay. We'll, we'll cut that in edit or in all right, post. All right. Thank you for cutting that for me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we got it. We got you. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, no, it, it's been great to like re-catch up. I was really looking forward to this because like, you know, I recorded a bunch of episodes before June. Like I didn't record anything in June. Like I barely, to some, some people know, I barely responded to emails um, because I was home, I was home visiting family and you guys know how it is. Like, like I come from like what feels like the same area but like on the other side of iowa uh right. so like kind of ways away but like i'm home visiting friends i'm not gonna get any fucking work done like i'm gonna be drinking beer in someone's fucking yeah. uh workshop while they're working on stuff and i'm just drinking we're gonna go golfing yeah. a little bit get hammered more alcohol more alcohol more alcohol um but this is the first episode i recorded since being home and uh Fantastic. i feel like this this is a great way to kind of get back into uh podcasting a little bit with uh with you dudes and like just have a good time oh yeah brother no i'm glad uh i'm glad we're the we're being able to be the first guys to really get you get you on back on after a little sabbatical yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying refresh the batteries i know how that goes yeah. and it's always a, a great time talking to you man uh we appreciate you just like i said even having us on it's always a good time yeah, we, we were right. sweating we're we were like, man, we got to think of some stuff to talk about, like, before the pod. And then Frankie's like, dude, we just get on there and we'll just be talking. <laughs> we'll be cutting my vlog. We're like, oh, shit, we're sorry. Hang sorry, on. Sorry, dude. <laughs> you go. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we did fine. Um, you know, before, obviously, we take off, like I said, Prudence is out. Everyone go listen to it. Um, some people will get a chance to see it in person because I know you guys have a couple shows later in February. Uh <laughs> When are those and where are those at uh, for people that are going to be nearby that can go see those? Frankie would be the man to talk to on that the upcoming show schedule. Uh, 713 Edmund. Yeah, you got to change it there. Yeah, it'll be my big 30th birthday uh, Saturday, which this probably won't be out, but I got to shout it out. I'll be shout out the 30, big 30, 30, 30 baby. Uh, 727 uh, at OKC. Um, Gosh, we're doing an all ages show in August. Hold on, we, we have that. We we just I texted him. Yeah, it, it's it's in it's in the Instagram bio. I saw it today. Okay, yeah, here just real quick, Frankie or Taylor, you got it? I got uh, it. Oh wait, oh, there's multiple group chats. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. And yeah. sorry guys, technical difficulties. Technical yeah. difficulties. Here you go, read that out. Uh, yeah. So this Saturday, Jeff turns thirty. We're playing an Edmund. Uh, seven twenty seven. The homies. Uh, and Cry Hard are releasing an album. And then uh, next month, August 16th, we're playing Norman at an all-ages, uh, totally free show of Bison Witches. And then maybe we're doing a crazy house party in September. And then maybe there's even more crazy stuff later. I don't, yeah, I don't we're, know yet. There's talks of a weekender being booked. Maybe a weekender area. Oh, yeah. And I, I do, uh, I do believe there might be a Wichita trip. Yeah, and there's a Wichita coming up as so, well. Uh, yeah, uh, just follow Limp Wizards on all social media. Uh, w Y Z U R D Z for Wizards, and uh, two Z's. No, one Z. Uh, no, it's, was, it's Wizards. Uh, Wizards. Oh, Wizards. Okay, well on Instagram. Like uh, but anyways, follow that because Frankie does a good job about keeping uh, everything updated and stuff. Hi. Well, you know. Uh, I didn't have to get them to plug it. They plugged it on their own, but everyone oh. listen to Prudence. Uh, <laughs> if, depending on where you found this episode, check the hyper, check the description down below. Hit those hyperlinks. Go follow them on Instagram. Uh, whatever other socials they have. I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, just, we'll figure... Instagram, I feel like you guys post there pretty, pretty frequently, doing your thing. Uh, be ready for all those shows. Like I normally say, or sometimes say i say normally say a lot uh think about it i'm drunk uh, uh <laughs> is i'm not in oklahoma go to those shows for me since i can't be there and have a good time um you know one of these days i'll get to see 
the Limp Wizards in person and in or in B, live form. Limp I'm Limp stoked on it. That's a goal for 2025. Yeah, no, that would be awesome, yeah, man. Be good. Good. Up there to, It'd be so cool to link up and actually get together. Minneapolis Dude. is only 12 hours from OKC. It's straight up by 35. And I'll tell you what, if I, ever, if I ever run out of insulin, uh, I, I'll have to go to Canada anyways to buy it, which Minneapolis is all the way. So Yeah. And then, like, I have a house, and I got, like, a couch here and a couch over there. I got plenty of room. Y'all can stay here. It's crazy. You don't have bed bugs? No bed bugs. (laughs) Okay, good. Yeah, and then bring you some. You can get us on a couch, and we can do a a, a 20-minute power hour. Like, like, we got to do some kind of live, just even a teaser. Yeah. And then also, if you're listening to Beers with Bands right now, here, give me this focus real quick. If you're listening to Beers with Bands right now, and you're not subscribed, you're not following, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? God, I just had to get that off my chest. I'm sorry. I, I appreciate that because I am i don't beg. Like, I am not. I try not to be like, hey, man, go follow me and subscribe and stuff. So I let my man Jeff do it. I'm going to show up. We're going to do commercials. I'll do it, baby. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Dude, you should make a thumbnail for this where it's like, uh, like Tom DeLong in the background. And uh, like it has an X on them. Yeah, make it really clickbaity. And like Fall Out Boys behind you. Uh, the, the picture oh, of Jeff right there. But yeah, no. Uh, the divorced boomer dad crying while the big Fall Out Boy. These are all, these are all solid ideas. Uh, but everyone, at the end of the day, go listen to the Wizards. Uh, go follow these dudes. This is a great time, as always. And, uh, you know. Prudence rules, and I can't wait for the next one. Bye. Bye. Hey, thank you, brothers, so much, man. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you, guys. See you. See you.